Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the World Backgammon Championships in Monte Carlo, Monaco. We're here on, I think this is day four, maybe day three of the main event. About to get kick it off with uh, the round of eight in the undefeated division with Ryan Rebello playing against Benjamin Lund. Two people you've seen on the stream quite a bit by now, I'm sure. Uh, should be a really close and exciting match. Excited to see how uh, Ryan performs against top competition. You know, Benjamin, of course, we saw play great against Carson on the stream already. And we're getting into an understandable number of undefeated, on just eight undefeated players left. So we can look at it and just see that whole field, and it is a tough field left. Sander Lyloff still alive, playing against Sampo Niskanen. Finnish player, I think pretty strong over there. I don't know what his PR is or anything like that on BMAB. Um, on the second stream, we have Wilcox Snellings taking on Hans Liebe. Two absolute top players. I think Hans Liebe we've had in the UBC tournaments in the past, maybe in the first one in Gibraltar, I think. And of course, you've seen Wilcox on stream just playing perfect before. Dimitri Wa from the U.S., I don't even know if I know Dimitri uh, playing against Denyek Ziska is the other undefeated bracket. Still quite a few players in the in the second chance. Of course, that one takes a while to fight through, but I'm sure a lot of good matches going on there. Uh, if anything's still going on afterward, I'll try to take a tour of the room and uh, and get you some updates on those matches. Is the final 17 points? No, the final's more points. I can't. I think it might be. Might go 19 and 21 or 21 and 25, something like this. It'll be a longer match. But we're still in the round of eight. And so these are still going to be 17 pointers for a while. Oh, yeah. Hans Liebe made it all the way to the semifinal in the first UBC. Finals to 21. Okay. One of the most bunch of exciting matches in the, in the second chance. But we've got uh, Mochi playing Karsten. I don't know about you guys. Are you all, uh, we call it leaderboarding in the CrossFit world, but I mean, just following these brackets and scanning through is really exciting to see all the matchups and, and one might be tomorrow, seeing who's left. You know, Lawrence Powell and Jason Pack are playing already. Ron Rubin had that tough match. We'll see what he can do in the, in the fighters bracket. Stepan and Gaz in the, okay, so Gaz must have, uh, Lost his match when I gave you that update. Carter, who's still in? Yeah, just Sander. And hi, Carter. Yeah, Karsten's got to take out Mochi. That should be a fun one. That's a contender for the stream, really. We've got two great undefeated matches. So we'll do the 17-pointers. 17 is a long haul, I'll tell you what, though. But the brackets are all in the comments on this video. So if you can get to that and click uh, through. I'll go through them again, though. The... The stream B matchup in the undefeated bracket is Wilcox Snellings and Hans Liebe. We're going to watch Ryan Rebello and Benjamin Lund. And then we have Sander Lyloff taking on Sampo Niskanen. And final undefeated bracket match is Dimitri Law and uh, Zdenek Ziska. Two children <laughs> in the final eight of undefeated. Uh, the draw boss, I think the draw boss is fine. I'm on it right now and that's where I'm reading this from. As far as I know is correct. Maybe it's coming up funny wherever you're looking at it, though. Oh, ZZ shared the book. I need to find that in the room. I didn't realize all this time that someone was just passing around a piece of paper in the room here with odds on all the matches. I've heard good things about that. <laughs> he shared Nick Blazier. Sporting the botanist right now. U.S. black metal stuff. Featuring Hammered Dulcimer. Check it out. I got to go find Morton and get a book. I got a little time before I start. Maybe I can do that. Who's the favorite between Benji and Ryan? I don't know. On the sheet, I got to go look. But how can you pick one? I really struggle. I, uh, ugh. It's one of those things where, like... I mean, of course, Benjamin Lund must have a ton more tournament experience and and ryan's got some kinks like that to work out he gets distracted in 17 point matches doesn't feel like 
necessarily he comes with his A game live or in such a long match where he has to keep his focus so long. But the kid just gets the game. <laughs> like it's uh I don't know. There might be some like depth of it to get to, but somehow he's just been able to play XG and memorize what it does and and just perform. So um capable of of definitely better than three and a half stuff. I think he's been performing under that in his BMAP events and likely to sooner than later achieve, I think, Grandmaster in person. I think he plays thinks he plays a 2.7 online. Um, I'm sure measuring that somehow. I'm not not sure how he's accumulating that to know what his, his online average is, but that's what he always expects to play showing up to these tournaments in person and has been disappointed so far with, with how different live play really is, but uh, gets better every day. Won the open already and just, yeah, scary opponent for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so talking about pip counting and things like that, though, you know, I mean, that's another thing about Ryan. He actually, I convinced him to try figuring out the running pip count thing, and he was like, oh, yeah, I'm way a better player now, and <laughs> was really happy he did it. Um, but sometimes loses it and was experimenting during the open, I think, with not keeping that and just doing uh, like a difference count. But at some point during he said, decided he was going to switch back to it. So I have no idea what he'll be doing in this particular match. But um, that's a little bit crazy to like, if I was giving advice to him, I would definitely tell you, like, don't try new things at the world championship. <laughs> Pick something that works for you. But his game is new. Everything's new. So... So he just gives it a shot and sees how it goes. We got a lot of people voting Ryan as the favorite in the chat. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I wouldn't bet against you. Yeah, Ryan is also sun running. Uh, they do play in a quiet room for the streaming setup. So no headphones needed over there. That's pretty nice. Yeah, favorite 5149. That feels about right. I have no idea how to guess uh, those. Orion's on, on BMAP is. I can't say I have. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe. No, it was a bunch of backgammon tournaments. Okay, you then. both can yeah. start. Thank you so much, and I'm sorry for the delay. Good match. We have to place it so it's not. Uh, how do you want to place it? Yeah. Yeah. Is fine? Yeah. Is everything? Fine. Okay. So we can start?
Want to play legal moves? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah? That's a good, uh, a good point. Yeah, you should uh, start, uh, wait a second. If you're playing illegal move, you want me to stop you? Yes. Yes, Ryan, green. So we agree. Green. Okay, if he sees him, yeah. Okay. No? So, if you're playing illegal move, I'm stopping you. Yes. Post pass decision. We've seen he, he likes taking in general. Can probably see some life in this position that Ryan has work to do. Under 70% wins is going to be quite tempting. Saw many Danish takes earlier in the Battle of the Danes. Do we expect another one here? Oh, am I good again? Can you guys hear me again? Tara says I'm good. Tara also says sorry about that <laughs> yay welcome back everybody oh i got a whoa he's back there we go <laughs> yeah it's it's hard to recognize these i mean 122 might seem like a sizable error but on a cube decision like this it's uh it's not that large and can be hard to get it that granularly correct assessing this position i think uh looking at it, he's he's down in the race got the worst board there's threats all sort of our simple analysis um tools like pratt look at it, and he's gonna scoop it up i appreciate it though oh puts himself on the on the roof all right not a bad response for benjamin Keeps a little bit of life here. Buys him a little time to maybe anchor up and not lose a gammon as often. 2-1 uh, can't hit off the edge either. I think this is just going to step up and try to escape. Five-two, Finally anchors. And now Benjamin's got the take he was looking for. Looking strong. Um, does he have to play really stiff and clean up 11 to 6, or can he afford the blot and play down 13 day for some counterplay? The 7s, 8s, and 9s are pretty painful. Can clean up the 7s. 8s are still going to hit. So is it only going to save 6 shots to do this? I mean, 
hard to see how it develops too. We're going to make the bar way more often being down already. I kind of like playing for a little bit more here. We have a lot more ways to make the seven or the nine or the 10 all strong blocking points. This is just making sure, trying to reduce our chances of getting a checker sent back. And 3-1 probably just going for mobility. Ryan still has a, a minor race lead. He's going to have to worry about being hit on the bar a little bit and giving up the racing lead he has, but not so much because he's got his opponent trapped behind a 5 prime, and he's got quite a bit more freedom in the higher anchor. So going to look it over and think over the different plays here. And a 4-3 for Benjamin Lund. I think... Oh, yeah. My first instinct was cleaning up, but then I saw I could make a point, so I'm, I'm actually not sure why he's uh, taking his time with this one. Making the 9 is a great asset here, and giving Ryan a little bit of problems in potential tracking rolls and things like this. Oh, interesting one. My first instinct was to just keep going around, and I, I saw 21-18, to 18, but didn't want to have to waste a checker 8-4. to four. But sure enough, that buys us the most mobility, and we should just advance our anchor, make sure we're, we don't get stuck behind, behind Benjamin's structure, and, and Ryan's going to find that. Um, creates a little bit of a plan B for Benjamin, though. Twos can hit loose here. Can he go for this? He's supposed to just play quiet, okay. Almost break even, but, you know, of course, twos that point on head are looking a lot nicer. Hitting loose against a better board and getting trapped behind a five prime is a problem. But... You can potentially win here. It's still a long road, but that's step one is getting away with this loose hit. I don't remember if I got a feel for Benjamin's uh, play style, but... Well, I don't know. If you if you take Danish, wouldn't you, wouldn't you go for wins too? I would expect so. I feel like... I can't remember if there is, uh, between Karsten and Benjamin, if one of the players played more aggressive and the other a little more, more solid. But yeah, okay, goes for the hit. Understandable play for sure. Benji's style is slow. I like that. Was that a... Uh, what do you roll? A 2-5, I guess, or a 1-6? Something that hopped out to the bar. Great shot from Ryan. Uh, double fives. Ouch. Too fast. We gotta let something go. Do we just give Ryan complete control of the outfield here? And make the three? Okay, he doesn't want to get another blot involved and has some racing leads that goes for that, but he's supposed to give Ryan a little more trouble, apparently, by making two board points. Um, might not get past, might get some counterplay out of that. This is an opportunity there. Okay, but now he's got nice outfield control. Does he have to make a bid for hopping the prime yet? Should just wait for... The other play is, of course, just clearing the eight. What does it look like? Yeah, builders are pretty well distributed and likely to have to start playing behind. Um, so, okay, we can wait for a better opportunity. Ryan is now going to start sending checkers behind the anchor. We're playing like this. This looks a little stiff and front-loaded. I don't... Four to two, we would like to start that point, so why not? And then we can just play six to five and stay distributed nicely. Uh, I think, I thought Ryan was 19 still, but he could be 20. Okay, this one's going to be able to clear again with the blot behind. Now we have to think about again, is it time to go? The distribution for attacking us is a little weaker this time. It's just, it keeps looking very nice to be able to park on that 16 to me while our opponent's on the 18 and getting ready to, to run. We're likely to get forced off soon in a worse position. Our 6 is not very good. We get to make a better board. I was seriously considering it last time, and it looks like, not sure if it won more last time, it definitely wins more now but at the risk of quite a few gammons. And so again, this is going to be a tendency kind of play when they get this close. And if 
if Benjamin's the type to play for wins and not just sit on an anchor and try to save Gammons, then I think we're going to see him come out here. Four one is a perfect shot from Ryan. Hits and covers. Uh, maybe he'd prefer to make the three point, but this is gonna do. Oh, Benjamin enters at the edge again. Makes a bid for a freedom. Uh, nine's pretty devastating from Ryan. Five two four two five four. Three two will work. He's gonna hit loose here and figure out the best three. Um, for now, we can just focus on closing out. Just in case we're hit, we like to have that eighteen point link. Uh, but we have to give up our five prime. So he's going to look at, okay. So the thought there, I guess, is that if we get hit, at least we still have a five prime in front. But um, he's going to look at the quiet play, too. This is just going to give the really tight race is the biggest feature here, I do believe, that uh, if, if Benjamin escapes, he's uh, in great shape in this game, maybe even the favorite. So I think he's got to go for a hit to maintain an advantage and usually you're not hit back it's one of these situations where we turn it into uh you know we we win most of the time when we're missed we're sure we're gonna lose when we're hit but um okay finds the play where he breaks the anchor not looking at the eight to five top play here it does feel a little strange to break that offensive structure but one two looks duplicated as well interesting Tough to see why there's such a big difference between those two, but I guess uh, covers is a big part of it. You're upside when you're missed. You get to make the three-point a little more often. When you're hit, are you, are you really better off here? This particular roll, he's just going to use to hop out, and so he wouldn't have cared about having the blot on the eight anyway. Oh, he has the six to hit as well. Wow. I am... Um I am not sure which I would have done had <laughs> I seen that sooner. But okay, fans and Benjamin's going to be playing on too good here. I guess holding the cube, that makes a lot of sense. Make sure we can escape and cash all games when something goes wrong. Or three, I think... Yeah, my first instinct is to link the nine. Man, all the plays are so close here. The other day, idea is just to bring two checkers in and get ready to pounce on the ace should he enter. Um, A6 is somewhat duplicated here. Two's going to hit one of the checkers. Five is going to come in from the nine, I do believe. For a maximum numbers to close out the ace. And Benjamin now holding the two cube in good shape to win a gammon. First ace from Ryan. If he can be missed, making an ace point is going to save a lot. Maybe the best he can do. Okay, we're going to hit for sure. Sure. And then is having the bar so important here? Probably not. I would think seven to five for for diversification of ways to close. Uh, nine seven, I guess, does give us double sixes as well. How bad do they play when we don't do that? Ah, uh, double sixes leaves a shot. Otherwise, so that may be part of this nine to seven play. They're quite close though. All right, ace to anchor. Saving a whole bunch of uh, gammons for Ryan, possibly. Saving some winning chances, too. Pretty huge for him. But Benjamin's still cle clearly playing on. 5-1 looks like it stacks up the 5, but he must be thinking about clearing the 7 while Ryan's on the bar and can't hit him. Okay. Uh, distribution just a little too weak after that one, so XG slightly prefers stacking up the 5, but understand the idea. 4 in for sure, and then what do we do about this distribution now? Continue. Oh, well, the best we can do is start clearing the six. Okay. It evens up anyway. Ryan enters in slots. Looking good. Five three is going to clear the five point. You see the problem with that bar clearing play now. And Ryan is ready should Benjamin leave a shot. This, I would imagine, the four off. I think we're in one of those situations where more numbers leave shots if we pre-clear the six. Six four, another two off. Still looking good for a gammon. Ryan not able to get either of those back checkers moving. 
Five three is gonna close the board, but it would be better to get moving around. Six two still safe for Benjamin, hasn't left a shot yet. Double twos. So he's taking one off and he can either clear the four or take two more checkers off. We leave the double decker position and lots of double shots when we don't clear. And our gammon's fairly locked up as long as we don't leave a shot. So he goes for the safety play. That makes a lot of sense there, I think. Three one. We could start moving to try to make sure we save back gammons. We have plenty of room on the front, too. So not super clear to me between 11 and 20, but okay, yeah. Uh, backgammons are a real risk now. Almost 11% when we stay, so Ryan's going to find that and hop out to the 20. 3-2, going to leave the first shot. I think we tend to hit because it takes away a crossover for Ryan as well. The the two two off gets a roll closer to, uh, to making the the gammon, so maybe not. But often we like that because our opponent can also enter high and uh, and we can get rid of the contact by hitting. But okay, um, it looks here like getting a whole roll closer to our gammon and backgammon. To our backgammon, it's about backgammons. It encourages our opponent to stay there. We can roll a set. Very interesting. These are some of the hardest ones to predict to me when uh, when the backgammon's live enough that that we have to play make plays that apparently win more, don't win as many gammons, win more backgammons. Benjamin knows it, though. Nice job from him. Uh, yeah, this one's going from the 20, and it's going to stay for contact. I don't think we want to leave until, okay, he's just going to try to save the backgammon, is his idea? Can he possibly save the gammon if he does this? Uh, yeah, a little bit, okay. Small inaccuracy there, but uh, doesn't want to risk losing the backgammon, just runs. And I think we want to run like that when we get down to four checkers, but usually when there's six, we can... No, oh, it's one roll away. Five, three. Ah, uh, this is a gammon. All right, four points to start for Benjamin. Exciting game one. Ooh, I got to throw Roberto Gowie's message into Google Translate. Hey, Roberto. All right, Ryan starts off with 6-4 pointing. 5-4 is should not split, but I'm not sure... How Benjamin treats this roll, if this is a second roll concept that he uses. He pauses to think about it, and it always blows my mind when these really strong players that haven't just memorized all the second roll responses sit and take time on the clock and just figure it out and get the right answer. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense to me. And usually come up with the right one, too. How you doing, David Wells? Are you alive and playing or just hanging out? You're welcome to sit and talk with me if you want. Awesome. Cool. We're going to get David Wells to help me out here. Ooh, this is odd. you got to like, talk straight into it. You'll hear yourself on the speakers if you're live. Am I? Yeah, I'm live, yep. I guess. Sweet. And he's still thinking about this second roll position, trying to figure out what you're supposed to do with the 5-4 after 6-4 point. This is the correct play. Two down. Do you know that one, David? 
Uh, I would have to think about it as well. <laughs> it's just so crazy to me. You can just memorize them, man. It's so much easier. <laughs> Three one points. It's really impressive, though, that somehow you guys figure that out and come up with the right answer. Seems like you probably have to split. He doesn't have any. He's got very few builders. Uh, yeah, we're we're splitting into a better board. What else are you gonna do when we're down in the race? So I don't know if that fits the game plan or not. Having a checker down to uh, contain the single checker back makes some sense too. But I guess that means that Ryan has better timing too. Sure. Before he has more checkers in the zone, I guess it's just time yeah, to step got, up. He, yeah, he's got six on his midpoint. This is it's clear to step up with. Yeah, six probably, on the midpoint means there's about to be ten in the zone, most likely. This is black on roll, or I mean white on roll, right? Or yeah. Just, yeah. So. Oh uh, yeah, black on roll. No white on roll. Yeah. Sorry. So it seems <laughs> clear to to step up, and I see he's, he's thinking he doesn't want to step up, which I know he's outboarded, but before black can uh, unstack the midpoint yeah competing themes uh, and as we can see stepping up is a huge a huge and this is very close in the ballpark realizes the need to move a back checker and chooses uh some containment in the outfield as well chooses not to step into the the most dangerous point of the 21 and 5-1 will ryan find making the eights getting you another piece of structure and consolidating his race lead we're going for the hit and lift, and the lift just never comes to mind for me. But with eight in the zone, I guess this is a theme that I need to remember more often. Well, wow, um, he knows it. He's. This is actually a pretty tough play. Yeah, I think a lot of ideas. I, the problem with the uh, making the eight is that you don't really like your ace so much. Um, you hate letting your opponent just anchor too. Ryan found but it. But finds the best one. You've been playing with Ryan in the Chouettes all week. What do you think of his play? Uh, Ryan is uh, a fantastic player. Yeah. Huge natural talent. Sorry? I said he's a huge natural talent and he works hard. Yeah. Double threes from the roof. So Great shot. Yeah. This must be part of the merit of, me, of hitting for sure. And Benjamin finds a solid play on stacking, making other points, stepping out, getting out of the way of that dilly builder on the deuce now. Ryan hits the fly shot, and ooh, that would have been painful. 6-1, not a whole lot better. Nope, that's a bit ugly. It looks like... Where is this going to hop out uh, to? It it's like just going to play to the deuce. We need to stay back and keep... Make sure you all can those, make an anchor, yeah. Yeah. Stay out of, stay Checkers away from on that the ground. Nice and Ryan, shot. really, okay, now that he's got some, some ammunition in the zone, he could have a strong cube if David can't anchor up, but... Uh, or Benjamin. And Benjamin does anchor, so he's got great game here too now. Is that talking close enough, baby? Oh, okay. You might just be quieter than me too. I don't know. Well, he said you're not talking quiet enough. Sure. Listen closely. Turn up your volume. I'll try not to shout. <laughs> I think my voice was too far away. Oh yeah, that sounded way better. I could hear it. 3-5. No timing left other than to uh, run out like that fine. Look at this. 4-3 is going to hit. Ryan missed a small double here. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, he does have the threat of hitting as well as the racing lead against an anchor game. 1-2 stepping up. Is he going to think about it now? Yeah, trailing a little bit in the match too. Okay. Now he misses a large double on this one. Interesting. He's going to find it next roll with this after this roll. This is quite a good roll. 11 to 9 with two looks really strong here. Uh, yeah. Interacts nicely with the blot back. I'm not on sure the what he's thinking about. There doesn't seem to be any options. I think Ryan will find the double at this point. 3 2, I think we're just vacating the 8, starting a point, keeping contact with the mid. And if he does find the double, well, I guess this seems like a difficult take pass decision with the contact and the extra checker back maybe not so much with a strong board but i think um having seen benjamin's style so far I, I think he'll find an easy take of this he's been taking uh deeper if anything in general and ryan has decent instincts for this though i think he he's only at 71 percent which doesn't 
mean, you must see that he doesn't win this game all that often, and it's the threat of the gammons that make him have to send a cube. I doubt he's adjusting to anything he knows about his opponent, but that's entirely possible, too. I think he would have heard that Benjamin is a excellent player, not doing doing not any a adjusting. Taker. <laughs> I think he'll just play him play him like he would pl try to play perfect. Yeah. Someone in the chat thinks that we might see Benjamin pass. Uh, well, it's uh, by history now. 33 pips is a lot, though. We still have uh, good containment. He sees the weakness of that blot on the deuce. Um, only liability, maybe, is that he hasn't made the five yet, but we're set up well to do that, too. So I, I, think, I think Benjamin tends to see the, the wins in these positions and will likely go for it. Been in the chat asking if all Danes are takers. According to the chat, they are. There he goes. Fine. Uh, found the take. Very nice. Wow. Double twos. Does this switch seven to three, I guess? We could also consider... Seven to three it. looks kind of clear because you're going to be in the same boat if you just... It's it very feels... close. Look at it. 13. To... It's basically pick them. Yeah, the 13 to nine. Well, I guess I would actually probably look at stacking up the seven before the 13 to nine. 13 to nine is going to win more games, but you're not going to win as many gammons. Yeah, it still looks like he has problems clearing that point the though, and maybe this is what a roll. Time Look at this. Four one is Jeez. perfect. Yeah. No oh, extra goal. Look at this roll. This is great. Though. This is play it quicker. No choice here. <laughs> it's a joker. You gotta think twice against the five point board when you volunteer any shots. Uh, not with but, that roll. Uh, this one, yeah, <laughs> just four of them. Oh, this gets the back checker moving. That's a pretty perfect shot for Benjamin, too. Five, one. Yeah, cleans up the blot. Goes for distribution, looks nice. Three, one down. And a little bit of challenge to, to clear that nine point. Only three landing spots in sight. We'll see if uh, Benjamin gets a shot out of that or not. Yeah, I'm thinking about slotting the... Okay. Brings a checker in. Reasonable. But also slot the back. Four, three. That's one of the clearing numbers. Okay. Now he's just got to dodge the big set. Six can play in or all the way to the ace. Uh, yeah, but it was pick him on the place. Uh, Goes for the two in. All the way was, the, was basically the same equity. Double sixes. Oh, rolls the, the one shot lever. We'll see if Benjamin can hit it. And he does. Okay, four off. This is still going to be close to enough to claim already. Maybe not with the lead. Uh, but even then, I, I think, think it's a claim. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he can roll an ace. Is an ace even enough, or does it have to be an ace six? Well, I think this is probably a claim. Was, uh, with the blot on the ace and three perfect builders, I don't see how I don't see how you can take this, yeah. Looks pretty bad, yeah. Uh yeah, Ryan's gonna let this one go. It's it's a long match. Yeah. Easier to shake these off and play the next game in the shoe out. We'll see how he handles the the bad luck swings in the match though. Gonna stand up, take a breather, maybe go punch a wall. We'll see. <laughs> oh, opens the door, take it a walk. A little stare to the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> and a good start for Benjamin. Up six zero now, right? Get that on the score sheet. Slightly better move. <laughs> How can you tell? He looks the same all the time. Rory well, says Benjamin looks like he's in a slightly better well, I mood. Just had dinner I, with, I just had dinner with Ryan, and he might have eaten too much food. That, um, he might have eaten too much food, you said? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, just, 
we had some steak and some fish and some ah uh, okay okay and i went for a swim but he didn't <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you got the swim hair going man it's That's good right. stuff <laughs> have you played much with benjamin lund ever uh we just played doubles about an hour ago oh really he's your partner in that ago. okay yeah well benjamin, how do you know who to root for then uh i have five percent of ryan <laughs> <laughs> okay okay that makes it clear <laughs> And you need Benjamin to lose so he can play doubles with you and help you out there, right? Okay, it's clear. So no, this no, is no, not good no, for no, you. No, I played doubles against Benjamin. Oh, against Ben. Okay, yeah, okay. We we beat him. I gotcha. You guys beat him. Who's your doubles partner? Uh, uh Chris Rogers. Oh, okay. Good player from the UK. Go back to y'all on that. I guess Benjamin Lund has been around for a long time. Kind of took a. Short break from backgammon and back at it. I hadn't seen him play too much before. I remember, I've seen the name. I feel like he was at the last World Championships I was at. Not 100% certain, though. Maybe he only comes out for the best tournament. Someone asks if Larry Schiller retired from backgammon. I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. What are the PR so far? Oh, I don't know. I can't see what the PR so far are on my screen, but I mean, I think they're playing pretty clean. I can't think of too many plays they missed. Some small, like, opening inaccuracies of anything, but no real blunders. Daniel Sorensen confirms that Benji was here in 2019. Ah, uh, that is my water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. What else do we got going on there? Are you guys hunting the brackets, by the way? Oh, I should send uh, someone on an errand to find the book for me. Yeah. Awesome. I got Bill Riles on the job. He saw the the book from Morton um this morning. As not doesn't know if it's been updated since, but uh but we'll see. It's exciting. Uh Rory also wondering how come everyone wants to know so much about two game PRs? Rory's here asking about that too. I just we also don't I think uh They've been leaving it this way, the transcribers, so that the players don't get information about it game to game, which is kind of irrelevant. I don't think it affects anything if they see it, but that's the idea. Um, in my book, I don't know. I, I really like the PR for the UBC competition, but maybe it's not the most relevant thing in the World Championship either. I don't know. But I know everyone's interested in it. We'll be able to see it while the game's going, but I think they're both playing pretty clean so far. Yeah. Just some uh, bad luck. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Some, some bad luck, some good luck. It's usually how uh, <laughs> that kind of goes. <laughs> There's dice, things happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, someone wins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Careful. Sometimes clocks. Yeah, yeah. I got myself. I got myself in the two so many times. I can't believe it hasn't fallen out. I have to take it out myself. All right, we got those ads running by, too. This is the Monte Carlo Grand Prix board available in the Galaxy Shop. Um, we don't have the Tempest clock on the board right now, but that's available now, too. You guys have seen the players playing with it. I popped my phone in there, and it stayed really solid. I liked how it worked with that. Um, what else do we have going? We're looking at some other board there, too. Don't forget about the Galaxy app that got released just a few days too ago, too. Uh, if you have an iPhone, you can get it in the Apple Store. If you do not have an iPhone, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Oh, it says available for iOS and Android. Is that true? Is it available on Android already? I don't think so. Eventually. I think coming soon on Android. I'm getting my phone out now. I do not see Galaxy on my Android yet. I think that's a lie. Coming soon. The great ratings reset. For anyone that uh, has downloaded the iPhone, they know already that you're going to get a new profile. We're going to have new uh, 
match pairing. That's going to work a little bit different. Uh, on the app, only three, five, and seven pointers. And we're going to pair you with someone similarly ranked. And that's how competitive Galaxy Gammon is going to work from now on. There's some other cool features. Okay. No, I didn't. So, uh... Bill's telling me that Morton has not updated the odds from this morning, but he's getting the book as it as it was this morning, or hasn't updated for this round. And he just remembers from memory? What? Are there, like, printouts around, Bill, or what? Oh, okay, okay. And so, how many players are on that? Okay, so Morton's setting odds for just the eight undefeated players. Um, Bill, are you willing to place bets in the room if anyone in the chat is <laughs> to do this here? I'm sure I'll back you guys if you want. We got, it looks like, Sander at 10 to 1 to win the tournament. Uh, ZZ at 10.5 to 1. Wilcox at 11 to 1. Okay. Those uh, seem difficult. I thought for some reason uh, I was talking to Peter Hallberg over dinner and I thought he got some, oh, maybe maybe he bet on a player that was just like such long odds or something like that. Yeah. He was saying something like getting 300 for someone. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so those are the top three most likely to win, I guess. Yeah. That's interesting. Going into the final eight, they have to win... Oh, going into the 16 this morning, we had some... Okay, okay. Those seem like difficult odds to overcome. Why is Rebello looking up a position on his phone? Because he's got time to. Why not? Was he going to watch the stream right now? <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> Is XG allowed on breaks? Yeah, we don't got any rules about that. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not playing a game already. I hope we don't get like a feedback loop with the, the stream by the microphone or anything crazy like that. <laughs> Was 93 really nine years before Ryan was born? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the interesting thing about, like, analyzing your play earlier and all these things, um, I don't know. It's like backgammon's always the current position is what's in front of you, and that's all that matters. And having information about some previous position and what the answer was doesn't really tell you anything going forward. So I don't think we have something to worry about there, like chess does potentially. Um, oh, sweet. I've got a book that I can read through here too. Uh, I'll go through that in a second. What was the other one that I saw? Someone asked something. Oh, there was a question that I wanted to ans answer and I missed it. Forgot now. Let me scroll real quick and see if I can... Uh, Oh, someone asked uh, the book I was talking about. I know that uh, Mark's been working on publishing something from uh, his and Mochi's lectures for some time. So that should be coming out soon. And then I've also written something that I think is in the pipeline after for publishing. Um, so I wrote a book on match play for that. The, his lectures were, I think Mochi wrote something about back game play. I'm forgetting exactly what Mark's piece was on. Um, but yeah, good stuff. More books to come, like always. And so, on the book here, we have, uh, oh, you can bet on Wilcox. What is one win, two and three, one and four one mean? Oh, cool. This rules. I'm just going to go put this under the camera on the stream for a second. You guys can read it. Hold on. I'll be back. Thank 
you want 19 on the right? Oh, he's just showing you the stream something. Nick's putting that under the screen so y'all can look at it, but the betting favorites, and this was after round four, so before the 2 p.m. rounds today. Standard 10 to 1, Zdenek 10 and a half to 1, Wilcox 11 to 1, Lund 13 to 1. All right, he's back to scrolling. You guys can go pause it and read through that. You couldn't read it? I thought I got it up by the count. By the camera and everything. You can zoom around. Those odds were as of this morning. And as Bill was explaining, you could bet on odds. You got a price for winning the first match, for winning two matches in a row, three and four in a row. And the final X to one was the, the odds you got for winning the tournament. So I think uh, winning the undefeated bracket. Okay, not the tournament. So uh, Morton this morning had... Ryan at 19 to 1 and Benjamin at 13 to 1. Oh, Manny and Bill are bickering about what they're actually for. I don't know. Who cares? I'll ask Martin. We can get that online. Post a picture on Facebook. Oh, that's a good idea. I will definitely do that. All right, that's coming to the championship page. Should I just maybe I should post it on my personal one and ask Wilson if I can post it on the Galaxy page? I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah. We could, we <laughs> you guys better not get us in trouble, all right. But I'm posting this on my Facebook page. <laughs> oh, it's got Manny's name on it, though, not Morton's. That's perfect. Manny's the one on this one. Oh, posted. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> All right, we got this game going again. Looks like a small advantage for Benji to start, but this double threes is going to turn that right around two points and half escaped with one checker. 5-4 does not anchor, makes a board point, though. And a little bit for everyone in this one. Ryan's going to have threats of attacking for sure. He wants to think about the cube trailing six, and I think he can be a, a little more aggressive, but not too different from yeah. money play so far. 5-4 was a pretty good shake. It looks sorry. Look, what? It looks a little light to double right now. Yeah. but Just a little, though. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. This we got 29. Nice shot. 6-4 is a great improvement to the position. Probably prefers to attack or hit loose or something like this. Man, Benjamin is just... Uh, he's even slow about pouring his water or whatever that is before playing his move. That's good stuff. All right. The man cannot be rushed. 6-1 is just going to make a bid for safety. Reduces numbers that can hit, too. Of course, Ryan's happy to break his points to attack and turn this into a blitz. L look at this. And now he's right on the borderline. Yeah, okay. I, I was wondering if this was a double. It doesn't matter. He, he can't make yeah. a mistake here. Oddly enough, this looks like slightly less threatening than the last position to me. It looks like no, but, Benji's made an improvement. You but know? the deuces are more damaging. Before, you get, you can hit, but you get hit Very back true. and you're just losing. Yeah, yeah. And now that there are hits in the outfield, going to change deuce, the race a lot more. A deuce is quite devastating here. Yeah. But we'll see what Ryan thinks about this. I know, you know, I mean, being a player that tends to play just seven-point matches all the time, that's what he is, his bread and butter. He hasn't seen as much of this long match kind of yeah. huge score discrepancy decisions, and I'm not sure how he's going to decide to adjust at this role. Not surprising to see him take one, and it's not really, yeah, no no error d available to be made, made, like you said. He's going to hit and play in, spend a little bit of bang time to clean a hair off the board. Okay. And now, Benji's going to try again. Now he's going to find the double, I think. It's just enough. You got extra extra market losers. You got 5-4. You got more numbers to make a point. You're up higher in the race. Still another 10 pips, yeah. But, and this is a big double now. Wow, okay. The extra builder in the zone really makes a huge difference, uh, I guess. Well, the race Ace is making the four, yeah. The race is significant. Yeah, yeah. Before the race was even or something, or he was yeah. down, actually, so... 
Must have uh, Benji rewound one and Ryan advanced ten. So you really hate being doubled here. You, yeah. you could start imagining really bad things. Or advanced but eight. Sorry. Yeah. I think Benjamin will find a take. Yeah, I'm not sure how he deals with the. Uh, well, no, I do. He was uh, in the lead against Karsten the whole time, and yeah, once again, a taker. Great shot. Yep, it's going to hit. Does it do something with the back checker now, or are uh, we just focusing on attack? No, I, th I think you step up from the back. I think yeah, it's, it's the light now. It's not... It feels like that's a, a huge pressure point. If uh, Benjamin just anchors, that checker becomes a huge liability. Yeah. So... Makes a lot of sense. But, but it's, if you look at it, it actually is very close. Yeah, it's uh, going all in on the blitzing game plan. Seems you to be are, something are, that XG it's, likes quite a bit. It's like four one, double one, two one. You're you get you're suffering, but yeah, being able to leap with a six is pretty big. Besides the step up, surprise plus actually likes the two down play a little bit better. But um, okay, it's, it's, it's one of these where just both concepts make a ton of sense. Yeah, at, I would call this pick 'em at point negative point zero zero six. Mm -hmm. Once again, you can't really make a mistake. The Groner is back? What? What a roll. Oh. Neutralized him. Wow. Now he had wished he stepped up. Yeah, now he definitely wishes he stepped up. Found the best play, not rewarded for it. Time to clean up some blots and try again to escape. And not even the favorite after this sequence now. Being primed and out of time has some oh work dear. to do. And huge improvement for Benjamin. Massive roll. Basically a joker. 3-1, we're stepping up and seeing that blot on the 8, challenging it, trying to escape. And then I guess any 3 you like, 5-2 to two makes sense. Five, to you, need a six, maybe. you need to sa save a 6 in case he rolls a 5. But Yeah. Uh, this is interesting. 4-3, uh, not so great. It seems like you need to attack, but I'm not sure. Really? Well, what else are you going to do? Yeah, I guess just make blots in the outfield. He does have a blot on the deuce, so when he does hit you, he often doesn't cover. Yeah, he's got a better board for now, Double way down in the race. Cover. Okay. It's only two, three, two, four, and two sixes duped for hitting and covering. Yeah. So for lack of options, you really have to hit. Sure. He's yeah, eight to five looked natural, and then it was hard to find a four I liked. Three, four is going to enter and cover. That's a really good roll for Ryan. He's going to make a bit at escaping here, potentially. Four three. Ooh, can this attack continue must, the attack? Yeah, it must be just a deuce point, three point. Just make I mean, the three point. Yeah, yeah. And uh, huge roll coming. Yes. Huge swing on hits. And fans, for that matter. Two one. Okay, has room to play the ace nine to eight as well. And back in the driver's seat. Another huge roll. Ooh, very much in the driver's seat. A five. For and a, a five is going to win some gammons. Yeah. Okay. 2-1. Do we want to... Sh well, I notice immediately that the fives are duped, so this has got to be right. The fives ah, are duped the duplication the of fives. Okay. It's probably going to... Oh, no, it's wrong. Look. Oh, Yeah, it's, it's the fives a little better. It seems strange to volunteer a shot, but it does seem very nice in case our opponent enters on the ace. Uh, this is very that bar point block. Very small mistake. Distribution not perfect there. 4-6 Great. is going to cover the back. Basically a Great joker. shot now. Okay, yeah. saves a ton of gammons. Two one gonna clean up the shot. Still waiting on a six. Six five was the joker there. Four one. Oh, interesting. What wow. do you do? Well, thirteen nine is clear. So now our opponent has a four point board. So breaking our prime to hit uh, doesn't feel so nice. Slotting the back just looks. I mean, how can it be well, right when we don't have any covers to make and, it anyway? And you need sixes to get out, so you're really yeah. also duping your own good number. So right. I think the gammon. For, I think it, the gammon price plus duping your own good number. You just need to play. Yeah. Uh, five to four can be the idea when uh, covering it can just win the game. Your opponent's not a favorite to win a six or roll a six, so and hitting, here, hitting looks kind of out of the question. You really want him to bust his little four prime. Yeah, not that he's going to do it here really, unless he rolls. Uh, most rumbers won't bust it anyhow. Three just, two, just, okay, just, another quiet play behind for Ryan. Going to keep as much structure as he can for as long as he can in front of Benjamin here, and under a lot of pressure now. Four three hit, looks like it hits hit. loose on the edge. Yep. 
And the deuce is good for Ryan, but a lot of losing points when he rolls it anyway. Oh, he comes in not at the edge. Okay. He's got to pray his four prime holds. Really needs like a four three or something that's going to force Benjamin to crack here without escaping. Four two, four, does two it. might work well enough. Yeah. And now I think well, we get to cover. What else can we do other than uh, leave the shot on the seven? So seven to three is happening. And then might as well have the five point board and the whole game on a six here. Misses it. Okay, we'll see if he gets a chance again. Um, usually we like to clear the seven to bring two checkers in. The distribution's a little better as well. He's going for more cracks is this idea, but I'm not sure there's that many more cracks. Double fours versus double threes. Four two already plays. We can look for all, yeah. Uh, all the we're thinking about right. he found the right play. I don't think there is a lot of, yeah, it came out right, but I... Not sure there were a lot of tactics to that one. This is going to hit loose and try to uh, close the game out again. And if he can dodge an ace, he's going to be in great shape. Not a lot of gammon, so I guess he'll be able to think about the keep there. Ace six. Oh, what a wow. shot. That's the Ryan we know from this week. Two on the roof. Oh, and Benjamin enters quickly, though. Okay, he's going to have to do a little bit more to avoid getting gammoned here now. Huge swing on that. This just uh, brings one checker in. Yeah, it's a great I roll. guess we could think about bringing two in while our opponent's on the bar. A lot of sense to that as well. Maybe we pressure the, the outfield blot a little better. I like this idea. Surprised it's so significantly different. Well, double fours hits too, so it's it's actually extra uh, shots. Fours hits. Okay. Leaves three shots? Three shots is versus too many. None, we might not have to none. leave any. Versus okay. none. Okay. Yeah. You roll yeah, that's an eight. Fair. You're... you're, you're yeah. Well, Ryan looks for whatever he's looking for on the floor. I've got some score updates from other matches. Uh, Zdenyek's up 11-0 currently. Sander winning 8-3. And Hans Liebe winning 8-0 over Wilcox on that second stream. You can watch that with Phil Simborg on commentary. Uh, clears the point. Benjamin fans. And so Ryan must be a favorite to Gammon here now, right? By quite a bit. Uh, it looks like quite a bit, yeah. Virtual lock if he can not leave a shot along the way here. 4-2, we're going to take the 4 off the 6 for sure, and then I think just peel, but we could even no, up on the I outside. Five, is that five, more important five here? 5 to 3 is more important here. Okay, okay. You're we need to make our 6s, 5s, 4s work better. Getting yeah. hit is how you got to lose the gammon. Yeah, that's true. Game. I don't think we're ever saving any 5 rolls with that either. Yeah, all this, the 5s play even fine. Even if you clear the 6, look how awkward it looks. Like, Yeah. Very fair. You're still out on the outside, and then... No spares on the three. Okay. We'll see if we can figure this one out, too. It's not the safe, super intuitive. The safe play actually wins. The sa it looks like more gammons. Yeah. Because you're not getting hit. When we're in that 80% range, right? It, it, it really is just if we can avoid being hit, that's when we win a gammon. And so playing for safety tends to win there. <laughs> Who is moaning in the mic? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. This sounds hilarious. Rewarded. Double six is okay. Rewarded. Super glad he made the right play there. And Benjamin going to have a hard time running off this. What are you guys talking about with moaning? Someone explain this. I don't know what you guys are talking about. A haunted stream? If you let me know, I can ask Tara about it. Some sort of scary sound. <laughs> I'll ask her about it after this game. I think she's taking pictures of things. That sounds hilarious. Two crossovers, however you want to get them. We have nearly a fair, fair fight again. <laughs> score will be 6-4. to four. Six to 6-4, yeah. Just got himself right back in the match in one game. Much needed for Ryan. Going to resign the gammon. Okay. That 1-6 was a massive swing. Oh, Ryan's going to make him play it? Is that what's going on? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> uh, one moment.
It sounds like a fly combined with a man dying in suffering. Sara. <laughs> <laughs> That's artistic. Who came up with that? I don't know you, Pogassian Tudor. I hope you guys are just all in on this and making it up. That would be hilarious. But okay, we're off to a 13 away, 11 away. 5 4 for Ryan. This can just escape to freedom. Nice shot, okay. Starts on a simple game with the race lead. 3 1 is going to make a point. I think, well, I guess now. Five point for sure. Yeah, the offensive is still better, but you start to think yeah. about your opponent can never make that anchor, so it feels like you should make the point. Yeah, but you already yeah. were, were down in the race, so. Yeah, fair, to think fair. About. Okay. Double fours is a super joker. Double twos is a great response. What is our last one? It probably contains think, 13 to 11. 13 11. Yeah, you want a, a better chances of making the seven and staying out of danger as well. Yeah, it covers 6 2 and 6 3 when our opponent tries to run with those as well, gets a double shot. And I think that's still what Ryan's going to try here. I don't see anything much better. Yeah, Playing 13 to 5 just really looks overrun. Yeah, you're stripping your med. It looks like right to run. run. It's yep. a bit scary coming under the gun, but when, it, oh, when you get away with it, it yeah. it's, it's super worth it. Yep. Okay, Benjamin uh, hits that first attempt and six out. Why not aim for a... Uh, he's going to play down and said, wow, I'm surprised how close those are. Looks very intuitive to me to play 24 to 18, but I guess you don't like leaving the last spare on the 23, so a little bit awkward. Um, and doesn't want to be six prime, so Brian's going to go for the tempo hit while outboarded. It's Good like, find. Yeah. And is there any chance Benjamin has a cube? He's going to pause thinking about it. I, I wasn't thinking about it necessarily, but uh, this a is hit a puts a second response. checker back yeah. and makes a five prime, and this is a crusher. Without a three, the game may be over here. Most likely. Uh, double fours on the roof. Yeah. This is just a double pass now, I think. Looks like it. I don't think Ryan can afford to play this one against 11 nope. in the zone. Looks a little too strong. Some Finnish guy, Solly, thinks he has bad luck. What? Someone has a mic on where it is picking up these weird sounds. Okay. Cool. I have no idea what that is. That's funny. Who's the second commentator? We've got uh, David Wells on there. Okay. Benjamin finds a cube and sends it over and going to give Ryan a think here. Um, I imagine... Since he has pretty strong instincts about cube action, um, that he's probably just thinking about how to adjust for the score. And decides on a pass there. Reasonable. Yeah, I don't think at this score there's any, on a two cube, there's any adjustments to be made. Maybe a chair scraping? Huh. I guess there could be a chair squeaking in the room or something like this. I don't know. David Wells commenting, one of the best players in the world, someone says in there. Yeah, thanks for joining me, David. I need help on these, man. Six two. How do you decide to run from the front or the back here? The front looks intuitive to me, but I uh, uh, usually you want to run from the front. You're, you're under the gun on the on the twenty three, anyhow. So fair. This looks like down for sure, and then maybe split with it. Yeah, sp split now. Causes to consider the tempo. Causes some issues with that man under 15 to get to safety. Yeah, it does help cover the outfield a little bit. Good find. 2-1. This is awkward. We'd love to clean up, but then we don't like our ace 24 to 23. Not really looking to slot into stronger structure. I think that's the best of what we got. Yeah, it looks kind of... It's not fun to do it, but I didn't see any alternatives. And now with a close race, what does 4-3 do? I kind of like a 3 down in the outfield. but I kind of like uh, 18, 18 and down. 18 and oh. down? I Oh, look at this. Hitting is All clear. the way makes more sense. I really don't like giving my opponent a good 6, though, yeah, when he really doesn't have him on the board. Idea. So I don't want to be on the 18 on this roll. Yeah, you have him outboarded, I guess. That makes more yeah. sense. And so running helps pursue that. I guess it covers the outfield, too. I forget that all the time, that being in the outfield is a great way to control the outfield as well. Yeah. The, and now he's going to look at the actual best play well, here of coming down, the two bringing best the plays, actually, and uh, focusing on his better board. Good find there. 
He gets hit, but it's not all good for Benjamin. Has to expose a blot on the 18. And going to offer a lot of return hits. Ryan doesn't find one. I think he anchors up here now. And does he just slot in front? The 13 to 8 doesn't look good, so I'm going to think about it. We still have an anchor yeah. and a better board. It looks Please like you want to slot the 5. Duplicated. Yeah, why not play 10 to 5 with it? They're very close. Always playing safe and simple. Um, XG never minds games like that. And Ryan's going to see the tactics that allow him to make a little bit bigger play here. Yeah, you can take advantage of that blot on the 18. And not many numbers can capitalize on both. Oh, the crazy sound has stopped for a little while now. Okay. Thanks, Arf. Six five misses. This is gonna. Oh, I think you're. Per it was gonna cover, but then it could also make the ace. But uh, okay, cover and step out makes a lot of sense. Right, duping aces as well. Great shot. Double twos is perfect. Yes. And with three checkers back, I don't think Ryan's really creeping up on a cube here. But he's got a strong position for sure. This is not a good roll. Double fives doesn't do it. No, gonna dilly two builders. Probably not better to play six to ace there. Ace three. Is this just going to make a bid for mobility when we have all yeah, these extra checks? Yeah. Checkers on the three. Just, we might as well get out you, of the way of unstacking those. Yeah. You just come out. You just make sure you can get out next row if he doesn't manage to roll a two or a four. Mm -hmm. This is clear. Come out and hit. And when this works, Ryan's looking pretty good, but his uh, distribution's a little rough. It did not work. Did not work. Got hit. Not dead with the nice board, but um, really struggling to have flexibility in this position, so it needs to roll well from the bar here. Sixes link up and make a nice outpost in the 16. This will make an anchor, which is good enough. Ryan's lost his uh, race advantage. Yep. And Benjamin looking to come around with a simple game here. Best he can do is just play to the 7, I think, here and stay out of direct shot range on the 16. Still 7s to hit for Ryan. Do 10s get there? I don't think so. No, but this is but, a fairly good shake. Yeah, gets ahead in the race and, well, he's forced to come off here, but I think this is also, I think we prefer the 16 to the 21, preferred it last roll, and now we've got it. So, nice yeah. little improvement to his position. Yeah, that was definitely a good shot. Mm -hmm. Now the race is... He's taking his race lead back. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's thinking about here. I think he's counting the race. Yeah, I guess we should double check check the race, but uh, what is okay? Play B would be to make the ace, and this just looks that gross. Would, when yeah, does, don't we? I think he's going to so realize he's going to see very quickly. Race, so. Oh, there isn't a play B. Okay, but uh, counting the race is a good idea there. I think you know uh, should inform which game plan you prefer. I hadn't noticed that he didn't have another option. Two one. Are we? Yeah, I guess we can't afford to safety up the bot when we have such a good constructive roll for that checker back. Threes. I think we're going to get up to the edge. Yeah, so we keep, need to keep make the six, them, keep the sixteen point. We keep the sixteen. We have to play to the no, no, look, five and deuce. No, you maybe, maybe you making the midpoint is fine though. Yeah, I guess it? you can't keep the sixteen comfortably. Yeah, and he's winning the race after. So right, it's going to help him escape if he gets away with this step up play. And it puts pressure immediately on the check the loose blot. Which means yeah, another great point. It, without a three, he needs a three or an eight or nine or ten or eleven. To safety that so there's a I lot think, of numbers i guess he's oh, got and good benjamin's five. wondering if he has a cube now that uh ryan stepped up into it he's gonna have attacking rolls at point on head and leave him in rough shape but i don't see it here not good enough race and i don't think ryan's structure is so bad it's a little awkward um but i think benjamin will be happy to hit with fours and twos uh, yeah i think benjamin was counting the race once yep, he realizes when he finds he was, that he's down i agree oh he gets both Okay, the four hits for sure, and then I was thinking three clean up, but no, it can just point and not leave any directs in board even better. Yeah, and down Ryan six. needs to perform from the bar here. He did. And perform, he does. He did. Can this ever be a knockout shot on a fan? Uh, I don't think it's quite enough, but having the direct six is very nice if Benjamin stays on the bar. Oh, and he thinks he still might have a cube for being able to uh, cover. 
I think this is, is strong, Brian. This is this is probably a double. He's gonna whip it immediately. Yeah, wow, no, look okay, at a huge he's, double. He's, and he's almost super diversified. He's got sixes out and look. I mean, fives, fours, ones, and twos make the four point. And this is uh, pure. It looks like uh, close to double take. Yeah, similar to money. Okay, but very big double. What's up, bro? Uh, okay, more score updates. Zeniak still hasn't let his opponent have a point at 13-0 and 8-6 lead for Sander. This is a scary take. Difficult to find. This feels like, uh, well, I mean, we've seen a tendency for Benjamin to just like take when he has winning chances. And I can see those pretty easily here. I'll be surprised if he lets this one go. But I, despite the numbers, I feel like finding the cubes a little more difficult for me here. Yeah, the diversification is 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 quite huge. Yeah, everything's gonna play nice on next roll, huh? Okay. And sixes are just completely crushing. Yeah, uh, fifteen crushers plus a lot of numbers to make the four, a lot of numbers to make the deuce. I suppose double sixes aren't so strong. Uh, it's hard to find a roll that doesn't make either hit or make a point. I'm not yeah. sure there are any. Five, five, three. That's that's the that's the five two is the worst you found. No, five three. Oh, five three. That's it. That's, yeah, threes that's, look like they should be bad. Uh, but three and that four, actually cleans up reasonably well. Three, makes four, the eight. Three four and three two. Five three. Three four makes the deuce. But three four is good. Yeah, three two. Three two three, is. Three two uh, makes the eight, or does it step up? Yeah, they all look pretty good. Looks like it steps. Benjamin gonna take. Mm, great take. No bad rolls, but I'm playing it anyway. Okay, makes the four point. Nice improvement, but leaves a lot of life for Benjamin. Really would have preferred the six. Okay. Ace five. Is this gonna have to hit for tempo? Like, I don't see any other way to avoid leaving a shot anyway. So yeah, he's gonna go for it. And could turn this game around quite quickly if Ryan doesn't perform well again from the bar. Entering's good enough, most likely, but spread around a little bit with blots and at risk of being behind a five prime. Three six should work. I think it just has to hop out. Yeah. Otherwise, we come down into do a direct range anyway, cleaning up. There's nothing. Nine to three looks pretty stiff. Reduces shots, actually, in an interesting way. Nothing to And think. Benjamin's got a lot of good rolls coming up himself now. But it would be a stretch to find a recube at, at 10 away here. And especially when you're still losing. Okay. <laughs> Hits at high risk, though. And I think, do we have to clean up a blot 7 to 5 now? You can do bases by uh, continuing. Was that not, maybe that's not the right idea. 12 to 10 you're looking at? Yeah, because it would be nice to make the bar point. Yeah, it would be. So we have a dilemma there whether... You but, know, when, but, when things go well, we can make the five prime right away. Yeah, but when we get hit, probably, now we have a whole extra right. blot around. You, you basically need to count the shots and figure out the least shots. I think this is the least shots. Takes away the two, five, and three, four. No, three, four still hits. Three, four does still hits. hit. Yeah, you need, I, think you would need, I think you need to think about this one pretty hard. All tactics for you on this one, huh? Just strategically, I immediately looked for, how about we just have one less blot? <laughs> Seems like maybe we'll lose a few less gammons when things go wrong that way. Yeah. It does seem to be the difference on this, too. Uh, actually, yeah, doing something that doesn't clean it up wins more, but at the cost of gammons. Very interesting. It's not that many gammons either. It's a lot of back gammons. That's interesting. Do you see that in the numbers there? It loses almost 3% more back gammons when you leave the blot. Yeah, you got to you consider the twos and the fives. That's what I guess. The, yeah, the second plus play is thirteen, twelve, because it dupes some of the numbers. It tells me that it's really not about Blots. the tactics at all, and it's just about one less blot. Yeah. Avoiding double hits is huge. Uh, there's a lot of life after death if you can avoid double hits. It could be something to do with that as well. Benjamin's going to want to come in, come out with a six and not necessarily make the bar. And so he finds a play that wins a little more, gets a fan, it works. He's happier on a fan for sure. 
And now what does he have? This looks threatening. This, is it ever too good? Uh, this is definitely not too good. It looks for money like it's... No, it's just kind of on the passport line and now. Right. Ryan's going to snap this up trailing. Wow, it's, uh, it should be a pass for money, but a huge take at the score and just knows it. And this is not a great roll. It's, um. Well, it either... It seems like you have to make the prime. This can here. cover the no. ace or make the five no, prime. It seems like prime. pretty strong. I guess you make the... Uh, twos and threes are duped if you just make the ace. So it's actually not that many shots. Yeah, very good point. This is a difficult decision, though, for sure. Very, very the difficult. game plans are so different. I guess the risk I, of um, the key, at the score as I, well. I think you really don't want to get hit. Being hit against a four-point board is just too painful. Uh -huh. um, and we actually get our opponent to fan a little more, which buys us time if, to if, uh, if, pick up that other blot. If, but Ryan entering is a huge risk here. And we'll see if he can figure out how to use the cube in this position, too. It could be tough. This, this is an easy uh, one. Five is a tempo hit. Great shot for him. And we could... Now, is wow. he going to be too good? What a swing. Too He's good. just rolling too out good. immediately. Doesn't even think about it. Picks up two blots. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it covers. No, I think it's picking up two blots. Okay. Okay. Yep. Still has a better board here, too. Getting hit on the ace is not you, devastating, you could, but you three can, in the air. If you get hit on the ace, you can from. cash as well. Yeah. So, ah, good point. Good point. So you can uh, send it from the air. Okay. Yeah. But now, two in. Okay. Way too, way the attack continues. Look at those number on PRs, too. Low twos for both of them. Very strong stuff. What can we do here? We're going to hit with the ace. Yeah, the, the hit looks clear, and you just bring it down. And then just, uh, uh, oh, once no. again, just in case for, like, when things go wrong, we just oh, clean likes... up a blot. Very interesting. This buys some indirects, maybe, but not too much. And okay. Benjamin hits one. Okay. Down. Now, do we need to send, or can we keep playing here? Oh. Uh, I, well, he decided he wasn't going to think about it. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> He's in the zone. Don't distract him from winning this gammon, David. <laughs> Four two hits. He just knows it's coming. Eight points. S Give him. Seven is clear here. You going? Yeah, nine to seven. Do uh, and he really wants to attack on the ace and prevent that anchor. That's going to be the cleanest path to a gammon. Well, Six and five hit and loose. Five one will do. And the ace, I guess, the only one we have is uh, 10 to 9. Oh, he chooses to bring it in instead. Okay, a few more covers with the 6 when you stay on the uh, the bar point. Ah, uh, yeah, Rory points out that he unduplicated his 6s uh, er, out. I don't think that's a priority here. I think just everything that covers is very strong. Um, okay, Benjamin buys some time and gets the anchor. Still in the driver's seat to win a gammon, but that's huge for him. Ryan's still fanning here. And is he ever going to be able to find a... No, as soon as he still, sends the still. cube, the gammons get really weird. So I'm not sure he's going to have enough of a threat. I think we still just step up to the edge. Fours and sixes is more, but now he has fives, fours, and sixes. The problem is that when he leaves with a four or six, he'll be stuck with only fives out. So I think it's better to come up to the 22 here. Well, a little bit... Uh, also, also, the one five becomes a horror number. Yeah. And Coming one six... Out is clear. I think. It has to be, right? Uh, yeah. It seems like it. I mean, and if Ryan can hit that blot in the outfield, he'll be uh, posting again. Really wants Benjamin in the air here. Ryan, Ryan needs to consider the cube now. Probably still too good, I guess. Yeah. Well, he pauses to think a little bit more about it now. Fours and fives to, and to still way out. too yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, he really loses out on a lot of gammon leverage when he sends it here. Um, 23 to 22, important again. I think there's a little bit of plan B with that too, you know? Just in case the go things go wrong, at least we're linked up. But, um, 3-2. So he misses that step-up idea a couple times. I don't know how big that is. Uh, will he find it this time? No, it, it, this time it's, not right. it's probably still. not right this time. Now he needs uh, to stay Still 23 to 22, I wanted, but oh. they're close. Okay. Okay. And now that he's running out of time, he's going to start to think about whether no, he should he just even, cash here. He can even handle double three still. And the the take point should be really high on an eight cube, I guess, with the big trail here. So maybe he can cash early if the if he starts to get in trouble. But the issue is that when he starts to get into a position that he wants to cash, Benjamin's going to have more wins, and he's going to reduce the value of his gammon. So I'm not sure he's going to be able to find an easy cube here until he escapes both and starts taking checkers off. 
Ace three, okay, a little bit of light for Benjamin. Ryan just hoping to hop to the outfield, I think, but he might get some shots if he stays back. Sixes will be safe for a roll. Really needs to fade a six from Benjamin. That's huge for him to get to the outfield. Double fours is terrible. He's got a... Puts him in the air, so could buy some time on a fan to uh, escape with a checker. But if Ryan enters, he's going to have a way easier time playing around now. Very few wins for Benjamin. Okay, six out. That's a start to saving Gammons and such. 6-2, does he... What's the easiest way to get a shot next roll? Do we want to advance to the 17? Or stay put? Uh, staying put should generate a few more shots. What about when our opponent rolls a 6? Maybe not. Yeah. I it also gets us a little closer to home. If do. our opponent doesn't move at all, it gets more shots. So, yeah, confusing one. The 5-3 to three seems nice for distribution later, too. Not sure there. 6-3 uh, no, is one where we wish we would have come out, I think. And uh, Benjamin, to reduce shots, is just going to stay back and play 4-1, to one, I think. Oh, the but there's always an argument for stepping up and trying to get a checker home. Well, I think considering the cube ownership, I think we we'll would yeah. argue for 4-1, to one, right? Because yeah, Brian fair. can just cube you out. You just don't want to get hit. And I would have been wrong, but I might have thought that uh, stepping to the 13 would be the better way. To advance too, get one closer to home, and the other containing maybe making the bar point. Yeah, I feel Six like six is pure perfect shot. I feel like Benjamin had the cube, but would argue more for twenty four fifteen, just for the wins. Yeah. What a huge game this is for Ryan. Four three is going to take two off. Was looking to clear the five. Properly reached for the those checkers. Realized they couldn't move without leaving a shot, and takes two off. I like that. Five four going to leave a shot. Tough for Benjamin to win even if he hits, but it'll save a lot of gammons. Uh, that that hits. Good roll for him. And Ryan going to pause to think about the cube again. This is, uh, you just can't lose this, though. Still, you have to yeah. keep playing this on, you know, and still so many gammons, still way too good. That open six point is Oh, not really way too good, actually. I mean, it's just too good. Way was the wrong word. Uh... So if we want to win, don't we want to get down to the 12 to cover or the 13 or something? I've seen Benjamin make containment plays like this where he just kind of wow. keeps the checkers moving. Ooh, hits on the way and parks on the ace. Okay. And a fan is going to be risking some backgammons. Gets hits again. Okay. Yeah. So I guess Benjamin's style is to hop forward? Yeah, Benjamin really needs to not be playing to win because Ryan can double him out when things get hairy. Yeah, very true. So Benjamin needs to be playing not to get gammoned more than anything else. 19-14 contains best. I don't know. They both kind of... Yeah, you want to be able to hit him when he comes in, if he comes in and out. Like, oh, Sticks it again. It can only be an ace again, right? These guys are rolling like pros. Rolling like they want to win tournaments. Uh, Benjamin can get a checker to the six pure. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. Right. Benjamin has uh, a shot Small to stuff, save though, it. and Ryan's still a huge favorite to win a gammon here. His worst two off, though. Aces are going to miss and put him a roll behind pace. Uh, only one crossover available here. I never know which one's the best, but. Um, okay. Two off. Great shot. 3-2, not, not enough. Two crossovers, though. Going to need a set somewhere along the way now, it looks like, for Benjamin. Or a miss. An ace miss is pretty huge. Maybe he needs both. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like he needs both. Does look like he needs both now. 3-1 is one crossover. I think that's the best we can do. Yep. And going to need, is it Double, sixes or better? Sixes are better. I don't think he can even get fives. Yeah, and that's only if Ryan misses. Okay. Yeah, there's not going to be anything else. Otherwise, you have four crossovers, oh. but he's going to pause to think about it. Make sure. Find time to think, too, when eight points is on the line. And 4-1, okay, going to give him a shot at the sixes. Let's see if Benjamin can do it. No such luck. Ryan's going to jump out to his, I think, first lead in the match after trailing 6-0 to start. Substantial lead, too. That's a huge eight points. Five away, ten away. That was a wild one. 
Eight point swings each way. Ryan stands up there. Did he walk out of the room? I didn't see. Small break after the adrenaline on that one. Okay, okay. Got to go settle the nerves. Benjamin's feeling fine. <laughs> Ryan gives me a thumbs up <laughs> walking this way. <laughs> I just assumed he was coming over to see the analysis or something like this. <laughs> it's in there, not over here. You guys are playing okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, which one was that? Split off the anchor to try to. I'm not sure I remember that one. I'm probably allowed to talk about that. That was an AQ there. That work he sent me was okay? It was, I think it was a small no double, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe like 0 .01, super close. Yeah, I think it was a tiny no double. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think, well, I think when the PRs are displayed, it affects things in like a, a UBC tournament, but this has no impact on the match. You know what I mean? So I, I think it's fine to show if they want to check it in between. If we want to, yeah. Uh... Maybe for his emotions, right? But I could just tell him that anyway. <laughs> or you could, or you could just have anyone here. Frank Trigo could tell him he's out playing him all the time. Wow. He's great. <laughs> <laughs>
having a fun conversation about uh, seeing analysis between games and things like this. Um, oh, cool. They're talking to Arta just to see what ruling he makes. I'll ask him what he comes up with there. I've got opinions about it. I don't know how well it's like written in there about what we do in any case, but uh, yeah. There's like a lot of kind of far-fetched or like, I don't know, I, I guess, what do I want to call it? Not far-fetched, but like, uh, I don't know if you can actually use that information in any positive way, is my opinion. Actually, that was a double. It was uh, Benjamin. It's made no double. It was a small double. Oh, yeah. David Wells pointing out Benjamin's made no cube errors, so that was a small cube, in fact. But uh, that was a really interesting and fun uh, conversation about the rules. Art actually came over because uh, people were asking about it, too. But um, in short, there's no rule written on it against it. So it's not like Ryan didn't do anything wrong seeing the PR. We didn't do anything wrong not covering it up. He wants to come over here and ask me about plays. We can talk about it. However... He usually encourages all his players to uh, understand that it's bad etiquette and that it should be fair for everyone. So if one player is not seeing and the other is, then we'll try to correct that. So they said, let's make sure that Benjamin gets to see the PR too, if he cares. Um, but yeah, I think the, the general take on it is just, uh, I don't know how, like we'd have to go through so many hoops to enforce something like that to make sure people didn't talk to anyone on breaks and didn't get any information. So... It's a bad rule to have written if we don't have a way to monitor it. Um, and Ryan, so that's, defense, this yeah. is his first live tournament as well. What? It's oh, his yeah. First live tournament. It is Ryan's first live <laughs> tournament, too, so he doesn't know that people care about that on occasion. But, yeah. Uh, Steen says the rules are clear with some set that you're not allowed to consult during the match or check positions on a phone, but those are not part of the... The Monte Carlo rule set or Arda's rule set, one or both. Um, so that's not an effect here. And yeah, I'm intrigued how people actually enforce that when that's in case. I guess you could lock him in that room there, not let him go to the bathroom, things like that. But it seems like overkill too for the value out of it. I don't know. Feel strongly. Aren't we gambling? Aren't we having fun, guys? <laughs> 
This looks like because it can make a point that we come out to the bar with it, and then 13 to 11. Look at that. He actually should play down and strip the mid instead of stepping into it. Strange. That's a play I find, too. I like it. Something about the score. Maybe 5 away, 10 away gets pointed on head. Benjamin definitely going to have an easier time sending an early cube because the recubes aren't very strong. This does look like it just comes around in 13 to 8, but he's yeah, going to think about other options like making the three point. He's got three three builders on you, or three yeah. points to build on you. Five one looks like it's gonna need to. S you make. I would, my instinct was to split, but uh, he can actually slot there. Maybe a lot of four duplication. Maybe there's some tactics involved there. Yeah, uh, he's also not ahead in the race, so I'll not incent it to that way. It was a difficult Interesting one, to one find. though. But it feels like I really would have liked to split before my opponent's board gets better. And Ryan just whiffs here. 2-5. Yeah, best he can do is just hit loose on the ace. I don't see anything else. It sure does look strange. So he's going to look again and see if some other play hops out. And what does he find? He clears the mid instead. Okay. That's, that's Just couldn't stand the yeah. stacking up the eight point and all this and gets hit with the fly shot anyway. Would have been missed otherwise. All right. Three six is going to fan on a two point easy, board, easy, and that easy, might be enough easy for a ship here, I think. He's, with Benjamin's going to have control of this game. Yeah. Is there, is there any way that Ryan can think about passing this already with uh, the Chuckley structure? Well, no, Benjamin Chuckley? is up 15 pips. Wow, uh, so it's closer I don't, to I don't, good. I, yeah, this is not something you can take. Benjamin Very close has to it. complete control of the game. Ryan has no points. Benjamin can escape easily. Yeah, his structure's gotten almost worse having traded the 13 for the 11. Uh, I think Ryan will find the pass and Benjamin will find the double. Uh, we know Benjamin takes his time. But I don't think Benjamin is considering too good. He's just being careful. Sends the cube. Ryan going to snap past that. Made his decision already. We're going to move on to 5 away, 9 away. Yeah, I got David Wells with me. Thanks, everyone in the chat, for keeping us up on that. Benji, a cool customer for sure. Uh, I would have liked the two down at the trailing score as well, but XG still likes to split marginally. Interesting. And, yep, going to think about whether to split or make the bar point. Usually we make the bar when it blocks the 24, two five hits. A little bit for both in the start here. Four five is going to return fire somewhere. And it's actually plays that very quickly, but should have uh, unstacked the, the midpoint instead. Very interesting. And wants to think about cube action for a moment there. Maybe for money we have something, but uh, at the score he's going to need to wait. This 6-3 this just links two blots. Very nice. Yeah, and nice builders for the four point. And Benji going to anchor deep behind the structure, and Ryan's position looking good so far. Down in the race slightly, but still looks to be at an advantage. Um, I think this has to split somehow, doesn't it? No, you. you oh, it doesn't wait. have to. He'll be ahead in the race afterward. He's oh, this priming. is Ryan's row. I was thinking it was. Uh, this looks like Benjamin's very row. standard to me, but surprised that six to five has some merit here. I guess avoiding some double fives, jokers, something like this, double sixes. I don't know. You just got to run here, I think. Yeah, 5-3. It's not a huge race lead, so it doesn't look great, but everything else just strips your position, doesn't improve it. I like that play. 5-2, now, now I think... This is this looks like you you're look, You need to foul him here and hit. Hit and, hit and split looks clear. The old hit and split? Yeah. I, I would make the analogy of a basketball foul here by hitting on the ace, trying <laughs> to shake it up.
Mm-hmm. Great Four shot. Four six Ryan. links up. And now just a solid advantage escapes with uh, Benjamin still having checkers behind Ryan's structure. Threes should improve a little bit, make some board points or a board point. You really wanted advanced thinkers. So yeah, I think so he's got to make a bid for it with so 24 you, yeah, to 21, you step right? Up. If you get attacked, you can maybe make the 22, or if you get attacked on the 22, you can maybe make the 21. Yeah, great point. And you got a few combos to jump out, four, five, five, six. Well, someone asks if checking take points should also be allowed. I kind of feel like, yeah. Great. Excellent play by Benjamin. He finds but it. I'm sure everyone disagrees with me. And yeah, having full advantage in this position, he's going to think about the cube again. I, maybe. This seems reasonable. He, he's going to count yeah. the race and see he's down and probably not send it after that. Yeah, I think so too. Pretty, yeah, pretty big mistake it's, to double at this score, I think. It's in range for money for sure. 6-5 probably just plays behind. Sits on the position and forces Benjamin to do something. It's... Uh, and he's going to look at hitting. Breaking you, I think if you hit, you would just clear the 10. Making the ace doesn't communicate with the made bar very well. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it improves much. Yeah. See, Good point about just giving up the 10 if we're going to hit. Um, but it does. It's nice to have that backstop against the slotted point. So I don't know. I don't hate the idea of hitting yeah. from the 15. You are outboarded here, and I think you just, yeah, pretty sure the idea yeah. is just to play safe. Well, outboarded and newly ahead in the race, too, so fully escaped as well. We like to keep our back checker advantage, and he's going to go for the hit instead, okay? That was a, a significant error by Ryan, I think. Seems that way. And punishment looks like full punish for it. Gets the hit and anchor. And Ryan will be happy if he hits an ace from the roof and otherwise on the back foot in this game now. 5-6 fan. And oh, this at a trailing scoreline, this seems like enough for a cube. Suddenly, Benjamin's the one that has the dominated position. Has an anchor while Ryan's on the roof with a blot around to be picked up and a better board. And the race. He's got everything. Yeah. But I can see how Ryan can have life in this if he lets the game go on. I don't think we're too good or anything like that. But Definitely not. It, I, I, it, maybe Ryan has enough structure at, to at give this, Benjamin at this trouble sc escaping, but it looks scary. I'm pretty sure it's a double. No, it feels like a clear double. I'm asking about the take, actually. You think it's a clear take? Well, we know it's an easy take for money, and at this score, you know, it's a pretty significant pass. It's fairly close for money, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. From those numbers, I guess it would be a take. And Ryan's going to use his money instincts and scoop that up. Not too bad. And this is just honorary this, Dane in this pretty, match. Pretty poor roll. Not much to do here. Uh, there seems to be no options. Thirteen five is it? Yeah, 6-2 is a whiff after sending the car cube. Right. Ryan happy with his take. Safety of block. Two is in and five safeties of block. Looking uh, much better for him now, but still down in the race from a single checker oh, back, so not shake, all good. Good shake, good shake. That one's going to hit and cover. And Ryan under a lot of uh, yeah. pressure to perform from the bar again, but the open four point leads a lot of chances for sure. Benjamin back in the driver's seat at least. 3-2, Benjamin can't get off the anchor. Probably, he's going to have a lot of hard time bringing this looks home. Like, Making looks, the eight yeah, looks really strong. He, keep, keeps his sixes working. His threes are kind of working. Some of the sixes, three combos. But his distribution's really awkward here. Uh, coming out to the bar doesn't seem to reduce shots. So what other three do we have? Well, what does it do? Uh, it you don't really want to escape. You don't so really want him to this. attack you on the four point. And I think... Yeah, okay. You prefer him to attack you. You can come in and out. Yeah, you prefer not to be pointed on when you're hit, which doesn't yeah. happen with all those rolls, well, but those are particularly devastating where this gets a lot of returns. Interesting. I think the hits have These less... These can be tough. This one I'm less sure of. I, I find the run out more often now, but um, it seems like it reduces shots to stay back, and, uh, but maybe indirects get there somehow, like a 6-3. Interesting. 6-3 hits either way. Uh, looks uh, like you're going to be slotting something. 
No. Yeah, we could play eight to five, but it just looks no, too destructive. You got to slot something, but and you got to think about your. You need fours and fives out, so maybe you're sliding the deuce. You get threes and sixes to cover. If you slot the four, you got fours and ones, and bad sixes. So I, th yeah. I'm not. No, 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 no. This can't be right, is it? Just doesn't want to be hit. But yeah, interesting. And going through the the rolls okay. there, like uh, all the tactical considerations of which point to slot. Lots of good info there, but the the four points just a better point, I think, is why yeah, she prefers I, slotting I, that I one. I might have uh, also one blot less. Yeah, so just like the major the, uh, principles, I may have play way larger there. Trying to unduplicate my sixes, but just slot the best point, right? And four or five, great shot for Ryan. He's on fire. How's anyone going to stop this guy? Two five is in and going to break the. The eight, I do believe. Oh, transcriber somehow missed the hit. We'll catch up on that quickly. All right, Benjamin still has a racing lead, but he's a bit trapped. 5-3, what can this do? 13-5 uh, looks so kind of clear. So we can play it? safe. Uh, I think okay, you, staying out there doesn't leave any shots, so staying on the 16 bring, covers nicely. Brings in a nice builder. Yeah. I guess it looks like 10-5. Uh, to five. Yeah, this is what I saw as well. Why not like clean up a blot? But again, tactically, Benjamin can't get to it anyway, so reasonable to stay out there for coverage. Losing the race, it's nice to have that checker. If yeah. he jumps off the 23, you might be able to pick him Very up Very good again. point. This is probably going to so. be a little more stiff. Small opportunity miss. 6-3. Okay, two down. Plays fine. And he's just playing like he has a racing lead, I guess, but he's going to have to do something to take this yeah. game back over. 5-2. Yeah. Get some mobility for Benjamin straight out. Very nice. And scary to hit from the midpoint a little bit for all the returns. This is a Ace great, three great, will lift, yeah, though. Great Very number. nice. Mm. Yeah, against the four-point board, we really don't want to leave shots with only our two-point board. Need to make some board points soon. 2-5. I think this is going to force him to come off wow. the anchor. Can he really play 6-1 to one here? Uh, this Oh, it just looks so bad. But I guess it's even the, worse. Coming off the anchor is pretty nasty. So yeah, it opens so up sixes many builders. to points and just makes a... Sixes, ones, twos, and threes, plus attacks on the deuce. Maybe makes uh, Ryan a favorite to make the four-point I don't point think you can head. come off the anchor. It's a bit sick. But you're also just not allowed to break your six-point in backgammon. I don't know if you knew about that rule, David. <laughs> but it's just yeah. going to be a hard one to, for Benjamin to find, or any human, I think. Uh, that looks like yeah, an absolute just going disaster. Going through the numbers, I'm not sure what you're gonna, what numbers you're gonna find you're happy with here. Right. Uh, four, four, five points plus all the ones, twos, threes, and sixes. Maybe he's thinking point. about what happens after I'm hitter points. Can I just enter and hop to the outfield a lot of the times anyway? At least I have a four point board to fight I, back with. I think Benjamin's gonna go through the numbers and realize, realize he's got to do the unthinkable here. CMC asking him to go through the numbers and thinks he'll find the right play after that. So we go through the numbers after he keeps the anchor. Are there like really disaster ones for Ryan that he's going to benefit from? Hard I, to. I'm, I'm, ha I'm having trouble finding a bad number for Ryan if he breaks if he makes this play. It looks very nice to him, but I guess he can just race. He still sees the light with the six and can maybe find some mobility next to him. Yeah, roll. he can make the deuce point have a have a strong four point game. This is a very hard play though. <laughs> I think if there was that any duplication whatsoever, uh, I just one one two one three one four one four one is like uh, mildly mediocre. Five one, I guess, is a bad roll. Yeah, we got a lot of people saying that uh, twenty one to sixteen is just suicide, but frankly, this looks like suicide to me. I, I don't understand how you win this game. You just race. Yeah, well, how do you race with three checkers back behind decent structure and outboarded? Um, like Ryan can just hit loose now. Uh, yeah, but you can come. You, you got the you got the twenty one point, and he's got two blots. He probably loses a lot of gammons this way. I uh, yeah, look at that. Actually, the gammons jump up a bunch on the other play, of course. But um, you're not wow. you're not forced out of there with anything next roll. So, uh, you're forced only out of the twenty three point. 
You're not forced out of off the 21 point, I don't think, with anything. That's fair. I guess double fours, you're forced out. Well, then you're not. Double fives, but those are good rolls. Often you're going to be able to scramble off the 23 point, have a four point board, and you got the 21 point anchor. That's fair. Clearly XG likes it. It's just scary. I mean, at this point in backgammon, I'm more afraid to give up my six point than I am to come off the anchor. I don't know. <laughs> Also, he's going to have to admit to people afterward that he made this play. That's that's kind of hard. And Good he finds it. Nice play, Well Benjamin. done by Benjamin. Spends an adequate amount of clock time here. In 4-3, do we point on head or do we make the pure point? Uh, looks pure, right? Pure looks better. Could be. I'm not sure. You, the other one looks a bit stiff, leaving two men on the seven point. This looks this looks beautiful. Very true. Pretty backgammon, you know. Oh boy! All right, no choice. Yep, gotta go. Uh, hope Three. you don't roll this again, though. <laughs> And Ryan holding the two cube. I don't think he has cubes in this game, but he's going to think about it. Wow, he's really close. Very, okay. Plus, plus takes it further away, but I'm surprised. I just find it so much easier to not even consider in these kinds of spots. 6-2 is bad. No, not too bad. No, yeah. I guess it's just, it's really only 5-4, five, 6-5. Six, five. Okay. So... Interestingly enough, it was the same amount of shots that he came down, but I guess he wants to stay back for shots. Yeah. Or two, once again, Benjamin getting a chance to uh, run out of this. It still has an even race if he can escape somehow. Just unlikely. Uh, five, five, uh, great shot crusher, Ryan. Yeah. I think. I guess it's got a switch seven to deuce. I mean, it's a winning role. I guess he's going to win a bunch of gammons the, the other way. And he way. finds, okay, just clear, come in and play for the race. Yeah, this does look better, I suppose. Yeah. Well, when Benjamin no rolls, uh, Benjamin can come in on the ace or the deuce and it becomes pretty ugly. Yeah, why do we want to volunteer anything? This doesn't really gain all that much. It looks like it's pretty close. That was my instincts to begin with, but... I mean, you've won the game if you just play safe, right? Yeah, no, that's so. a fair point. I wasn't looking at it that way, especially at the score. Yeah, taking two points here, getting three away, like that's on the variations he enters, and you can play on when he doesn't. Yeah. So it looks like you just, it's base, it's, yeah, it's gin, basically. If you, I'm not sure even 4 4 will be a take. It might be. Benjamin still has a four-point board. Benjamin rolls a four. Could be trouble for Ryan. Interesting that it's only 5% more gammons that he gets out of this. I still think the... I'm not sure if he's considering that he's just going to claim either way afterward, but probably oh. that's that helps him uh, find the play too. 2-6 Two, is going to hop out, an 11-point lead, or 11-pip lead. I think he's going to find the cash now, like you said. Yeah, this is just a... Looks like just a double pass, right? I wonder what he's counting through. I don't think he 
I don't think he calculates take points or anything like this. I think this. he's thinking about if he can win some gammons here. I think he thinking knows. About what? I think he's thinking if he can win some gammons. Ah. I think he knows it's a pass. It has to just be intuition that tells him it's a pass, though. I, I don't think oh. he has access in his brain to. Uh, I think he's had enough experience. He can just see that this is a pass. Without, five way, without five even way is clearly a pass still. Yeah. Yeah. It's one I of those, mean, he's definitely could, a perfectionist white, white, at heart. Yeah, White just doesn't have very many winning chances here. Yeah, but he has to convince himself somehow that it's still proper at the score to do this. And, you know, without knowing the numbers for certain, yeah, I, he's probably just stressing about, like, no, this is going to be right I, if I send I think it. he's c c calculating possible gammons. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's, I really don't think he's thinking about whether whether it's good yeah. enough. Hard to imagine gammons here. I mean, they're basically just 2.25 percent of racing gammons. True, right? but but there's only 11 percent, 11 and a half percent wins too. So if, if Benjamin takes it, goes back to eight, sends it. We'll see if Benjamin can avoid a Danish take here. It would get Benjamin to uh, 11 pips. Doesn't seem like so many. Yeah. It's not out of the question. Well, once Ryan rolls, if Benjamin rolls boxes, Benjamin's still a dog. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, <laughs> not much of one, but he's for sure still a dog. And he's going to oh. take it. 6-5, oh. and he's going to have to get this recube in very early. Uh, one problem with the... Uh, with that take two is that even if he gets the eight and gets taken and wins it, he only gets to Crawford instead of Look winning match and no, Ryan leaves a shot. He and he's going to have to send on he this opportunity. What a, what even though it doesn't even win the game, but I think he still has to no, try. No, he's, it, he, oh, oh, it's still, it's still shy. Still yeah. Man. That's, wow. It's not too, I mean, this is how bad his position is, is that right. if he hits, he still has work to do. So it still gets value out of claiming later. It's hard to imagine. Uh, I, would, I would probably just ship it at this point. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm guessing after taking it, he's going to ship it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that seems like the plan I when mean, it's only one down, extra point. He's going to be down sixteen to eight. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess when you hit, you don't lose your market. If it's not a redouble, may uh, or you don't lose it by much. A re hit pass. Uh, I Ryan would be fifty percent to pass yeah some reasonably easy take point math on that i guess so he risks uh 34 percent or 33 percent to and he doesn't gain even the win match. the game right he only goes to 16 12 to gain 50 yeah he only goes to 16 to 12 as well so yeah yeah benjamin took that one pretty quickly i think he got seduced by the the pips <laughs> Oh wow! Directly rolls on, gets the hits. The hits. What is the just take got on excited? Here? A dance here, it's for sure a redouble. I think Ryan's in one of those positions where he needs to be close to. I don't think he needs to be a like close to a favorite to take it. Right around fifty-fifty. And so okay. on a fan, is he is still 50-50 no, in this is down in the race? I think this is, yeah, this is oh, going to be a pass already. Geez. So he did lose his market this game got by not by so much. And so the value for Benjamin was being able to claim this game ben now. Benjamin's going to find this one. This is Yeah, of course he's going to send it, but will Ryan find the pass here? I'm not so sure. This is way outside of our wheelhouse for evaluating. You know, like getting winning chances oh, in this race. Ryan has a lot of enough. time. He should take some on this decision. Yeah. But I really, I mean, having chatted with him about match scores and things like that, I, I don't think he's ever done, like, take point calculations well, and things figure, like that. He just needs to figure out if he's a favorite. He knows he's going to be 50-50. He could do that, but I don't know if he knows that that's all he has to figure out because he well, doesn't know the take point. No, he knows if he takes, he w if he passes the, the scores, it's 50-50 to win. Yeah. So this is basically, for the match, you can discount it by 10 or 15%, right? Or because uh, it only gets Benjamin to 16 to 12 Crawford, but 16 to 12 Crawford is still, what is that? Five, so five away Crawford. So yeah, he can discount it. So uh, Ryan should be able to figure this one out. 
he can see that he's just losing. Sends the eight. Ryan's gonna insta pass. Okay, yeah. nice job for him. Yeah. Crazy game. Wow. Wow. Looks like he was gonna be cruising to Crawford on that one after uh, an optimistic take, but instead, right in an even match. Yeah, that was very interesting. Very efficient recube. Once the three was hit. <laughs> Are they taking a small break here, it looks like? Okay. Should we keep See it? if Ryan comes over and asks us about the cube action again. Uh, I don't think we should tell him. <laughs> I think we Etiquette should explain, dictates explain that we etiquette. shouldn't tell him. We should explain. But there's no etiquette. rules we're allowed to. <laughs> we'll get to talk to him soon after a five-point match about uh, how I, he figured that out. But I still... I mean, all the math you're going through is right. But I, I really... I don't know how much of it he knows. I really don't think that's a thing he's bothered to memorize. Yeah, I don't know if no. he works with XG Desktop. I think all of his study he, he plays has a been lot on of, Galaxy. No, no, no. He plays a lot of seven-point matches with Extreme. With so, Extreme now, okay. So so this is close enough at this point. Yeah, in this range, it's just, I mean, but then it's all pattern recognition. He's just seen the scores, doesn't need yeah, to know the he's, numbers, he's, knows how it works. He, yeah, I think he has good, this is kind of, some of that was, you could just use common sense skills and guess the match equity and... He maybe a, yeah. He has a maybe. good feel of how often he's going to win that game. Yeah, and I, he knows he was. He's no, he's, he's not a favorite. Dog. That's yeah. good enough to know. Yeah. I mean, what was the race at that point? Uh, just down one pip. After hitting. Uh, yeah. Mm. So also not wasting like Benjamin's side is. So it's not super, but he's on the roof, which is just. I mean, which that's a massive, dead race when right? you're out. Yeah. 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 And so, Benjamin's on roll. So uh, I don't know who's trashing Benjamin in the chat. I'm not. I think he's playing awesome. I think. I mean, this is part Benjamin of his style. He just lights takes out and he, yeah. and he made a, a big blunder. But before those that, are difficult spots. I mean, I mean, some people know their match equities and all these like score situations very well. But there's two major things that can go wrong in that calculation, and one of them's also just not understanding that he's only ten percent in that well, race. I think Benjamin's. PR was about a 2.3 or 4 before that blunder or something. Yeah, really, really still good. very good now. But, I mean, you have to get that exactly right. I mean, there's a huge difference between 10% and even like 18% in that race. Might think he's making a closer well, decision than he's making. They both played that game relatively poorly for how well they sure, were playing before. Sure, in PR terms, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, bad cube decision all around. Yeah, yeah. Two, very, two bad takes. Yeah, yeah. I think Ryan's was a 140 error uh, when he took, and Benjamin's was a... Yeah, I'm trying error. to remember what that position looked like. It was a confusing one. It was shooting at the threes and the covering with the fours, uh, two anchored on the 21. Hmm, okay, okay. Yeah, just another one of those one-way positions in a, remember the six in a leading match score. The, that the very poor 6-2 follow-up. Yep. Oh, yeah, does nothing. What are the PRs? We don't know. Uh, yeah, I, can, I don't have any other view on my computer, so I don't have the PRs either. But Exciting match, though. This is, I think, um, the thing about being a taker is we get into a lot more interesting games, and that's what allowed Ryan to jump back into the match with an eight-point win, and it's what allowed Benjamin to jump back into the match with a four-point win of his own. Yeah, that was pretty So sick. big swings there, yeah. Exciting backgammon. I certainly wouldn't rather see them just pass a point at a time. I want to see blood. All right, well, I'm going to take a quick break. We'll there on break as well. Go chat with folks. We'll be right back with the conclusion of this five-point match now. Super exciting so far.
Thank you. No, I'm late. We're back at it. I came back. 1-6. Ryan's playing fast. Okay. Advantage him with three checkers back. Benjamin hits back. Nice blot hitting contest for our five-way five -way game. Okay. 4-5. Probably just going to run with less checkers back. Make a, a bid for an advantage there with the racing lead as well. Two one. Looks like we want to shift eight to seven, but we'd also like to make the twenty two. What's the priority here? Is there something else? Yeah, that looks nice. I like that play. Double twos. Can't get our blot to safety. We can see the light and link the blots. Twenty four to twenty two looks like part of it to me. But interesting. Okay, it's not. We should just play to the nine. To put pressure on that blot on the 22. Now if he makes that anchor, it's not so good. Um, sharp fine from him too, but tactically, okay. I really, I feel like if I step to the 22, I'd really like to keep those checkers linked. But we got to create a blot or play some awkward too. So okay, makes some sense. And he's happy now. 8 gets covered, but he gets to advance 23 to 22. Still primes, but it has improved his anchor for certain. And what are the rules on breaks? I don't know. Take them if you like them. If your opponent complains, maybe maybe you don't get to take them. We're chill. We're just playing for money and stuff and rolling dice. Or are the match files from the stream available somewhere? I'm not sure what Tara's doing with those. Um, I think she sent some of them to me, so I can ask about that. We could make a Dropbox and uh, share them all somewhere. Uh, always nice to send those to Terry and get them on studio and things like that, too. Um, look at this. This is a surprising result for top play. This makes a lot of sense to me to clean up and make the five point, but it does look a little stacky. And he's going to look at the best play as well, just making the seven. Um, challenges opponent to uh, break the midpoint to hit. Okay, the priming structure looks really good. I guess it looks scary to let our opponent send another checker back when we're half escaped uh, behind a four prime, but we make such a strong prime of our own with three checkers behind it that he's got a huge uh, advantage after that game plan. Very interesting. Yeah, the problem with stepping up and cleaning up is what else do we do after this? Oh, thanks so much. Raymond Lightborn with the water. My bottle ran out. Should have brought more. So I think he's going to rule out the step up just for... We can't be odd on it. We really need to uh, use all three to make the five point and not leave a shot and clean up if we're going to do something like that. I guess we could leave... Maybe we're leaving the blot on the 16 either way is the issue. This is a fine play to spend some clock time on, too. He has plenty of bank. Benjamin not in too much uh, trouble yet. Hard to fault this play. It looks very solid. And it's not that it's a bad play, either. It's just that this prime is stronger. And he finds it. Very visual thinker, and so just putting the plays in place helps him a lot. 6-1, whiff for Benjamin. And after this good play, does this mean he's going to have a cube? He's still behind a little bit of structure, but has a shot at the midpoints and has three checkers stuck behind structure. I guess 
The thing is, Benjamin still has a 22 points and uh, like anchor game. Worst case, looks pretty okay for him, and some counter play. So I think, I think we're a little bit early here. And two one. What is this? Can't escape the safety. So maybe it's just gonna step up and look for freedom. And look at this. The 16 to 15 has a little bit of nice duplication with threes. Okay. Our opponent prefers to hit us on the 21 as well. Nice find by Ryan there. Yeah, Ryan's playing really sharp. A game for sure now. Double threes. This is going to do everything somehow. It's going to hit. It's going to step up. It's going to... What else is it going to do? Is it going to hit again, I guess? Maybe it doesn't step up because it can make the four and hit. Okay. Okay. It looks like it's going to point on head somehow, but it just doesn't. So after this hit, I guess he can also make a five prime and just uh, continue making the four, huh? Ten to four, seven to four. He's got so many good options. This is going to cost Benjamin a good chunk of the remaining bank there because all three of these have quite a bit of merit to them. So putting two in the air feels feels like our biggest problem. It's going to keep Ryan's prime intact is the thing. And now this makes a nice prime of our own, but we can't keep it that long unless we roll a three or a two next time. Hoping to uh, roll forward with an attacking play anyway. So maybe that's part of the merit of making the four and the three is that it developed a blitz more, more effectively and... Has time anyway. Yeah. This looks like a nice option if he steps up and feels very difficult to av avoid making that play. It feels like mobility is the real challenge of this position, but apparently he's got time to just continue the blitz and eventually roll deuces and threes up. I think I, I like the idea of the mobility on this one for sure. Three one is a great response for Ryan going to anchor and hit loose for sure. And in the driver's seat, maybe the problem with that play. 4-6 fan, and this is all Ryan's. I think he's going to cash this. I guess he's outboarded still, but it looks so strong to hit another blot, to close a 6 prime, all these things. Yep. And we'll see if uh, it's reasonably close. And with counterplay, again, we have one of these situations where I uh, would not be surprised to see this match defined by another Danish take. With a lot of counterplay, I mean, play Ryan behind a four prime. If he doesn't perform immediately, he might not hit, and he might not cover. And then Benjamin could be shooting at a five from the roof and uh, and end up in a pretty dominating position. So definitely can see the upside on playing this game out for Benjamin. I know he prefers to do that in general. I'm expecting a take, and it's not too bad a one either. More exciting for sure. Six is escaping as well. Yeah, I guess maybe double fives is the worst, and that's uh, that's a real disaster. I don't know how Benjamin calculates these uh, positions, but if he finds something like double fives, that can be a nice convincing thing tactically to, well, how can I not play it out if he has something that can just basically lose the game immediately? Ian really can't see how he can take this. A lot of people voting both ways. If you watch the rest of the match, though, I mean, well, we can see the evaluation. It's pretty close, and I think talking through it, it's easy to see how. There are immediately, like, at least one immediate loss, I think, for Ryan there. Disasters and a lot of structure to get through, so definitely counterplay. And we've just seen time and again on the stream that Benjamin's tendency is to play these out when he has winning chances and not fear the gammon. So I, I actually can't see how he could pass this. I'd be very surprised. And the more time he uses as well, the more incentive he has to scoop it up and try to get through this match quicker instead of playing with three minutes of bank left. How Danish is he feeling? I like that. This is only like medium Danish too, right? 
We've seen way Danisher than this, and we've seen it work, and he finds a pass. Okay, interesting. Wonder what it was about that position that he couldn't uh, play out. Very surprising to me. But good find makes the correct decision. Let's try and get to four away. And Ryan opens with a 3-1. Very nice start. And at this score, even though he's leading, if he gets into a gammonish position, he can still send aggressive cubes, like regular for money. Um, one of those counterintuitive scores. 4-3 is going to split and down. Sure, sure. Opponent has an anchor, so he needed one too. Nice response for Benjamin. And doesn't need to pass all that aggressively either here. But on a fan, this is pretty well dominated. It looks like a cube's going to be coming, but good structure in front of that 22 point, so it still looks playable as well. And he's going to send it over, and we'll see what Ryan does with it. I think he's going to find the counterplay, and it can be hard to pass in the early game against only eight in the zone. There's just still a lot of work to do, and he's got a good position to work with. So even though he's in the air, it's not like he's about to be blitzed off the board. Another fan would be not good, but not the end of the world either. 5-4, likely to just play two down and continue the development idea. No need to leave the anchor quite yet, I don't think. We've got time to work with. And 2-3, great shot, going to make a 22 point of his own. And now they're in a fairly even position. 5-2. I think this wants to clean the blot up somehow, but then we just create another block. Can we play to the four and the six? Maybe we need to play down to the 11, but I think uh, nine to four feels mandatory. I really don't want to let my opponent run off the 22 point with te tempo. And plays the 11 for, for more diversity of bar making numbers. Five one just looks like down and six to five. Simple mutual holding game, just trying to make points in front. Make it harder for our opponent to escape. 4-2 doesn't do much for Benjamin. Oh, makes the 9 point. Yeah, that's a great improvement. Why do I always miss that against the 22? That's a huge point. Block 6 is out. And Ryan gets to do the same, even though he could hit. That's how important that is. I see it this time, of course. Thing is, when you're primed, hitting just kind of buys your opponent time to keep his position. So he sees the dilemma for sure and is going to spend some time on this good... Good instincts there not to just immediately make the hitting play. Think about how each can play out. And he has an interesting option in just making the four point as well. So plenty to think about on this play. And I like how he, again, just the kind of player that really needs to uh, see the plays to visualize how they're going to play out. So he's going to take his time looking at it. And we've seen him tend to find the right play here. Of course, yeah, getting to hit, I mean, it's... So he's outboarded when he hits on the from the midpoint and leaves four blots around, which is a big signal that it might be an overplay. And so I think, also being down in the race, he'll be able to find the right game plan of making the anchor. He's going to look at the hit again, the hit and clean up. But yeah, that just doesn't do enough for our position either. Maybe he's decided on the hit, though, now. Well, he, he cleaned it up. Needs to put the, the checker back. I suppose if he can hit and also make the 9, that's pretty good. Oh, he's looking at just cleaning up to the 8, I see. There are a lot of plays available for him to shuffle through. Fortunately, he's left himself a lot of clock time to figure this out. Yeah, CMC saying Ryan's impressing him a lot more. He's really fine in everything in this one. I don't I don't know what's changed. Maybe he's just gotten warm over the weekend playing enough matches, but but yeah, this is his A game today for sure. Going back to the hit. Really wants to I mean it's hard to pass that up when it neutralizes the race and gets you back in that way. Um 
but just not seeing that opportunity to play a priming game instead, given that he's got the better timing in down in the race. And hits and cleans up to the eight. Okay. I didn't see how big that was, but I mean, it's got a lot of merit and definitely they're in an equal game afterward. Just had uh alternate that was a little stronger. Not to fault that one for sure. They all looked very strong. Double aces. Okay, this is going to improve quite a bit. It's going to make the, I think, the bar point. But again, a bit of a dilemma here. He's, uh, why not clean up the fly shots as well and try to make the four later? Oh, we should play 13 to 12 instead with two? Just to keep that out there for building? That's interesting. Yeah, making the four point doesn't look to be an option because we either have to leave a direct six out or a break and leave so many fly shots, but... I guess this must leave some numbers that make the nine later. That's a hard one to find for me, though. I'm not sure why I wouldn't just clean up eight to seven. And they're very close, but small technical things. Two five looks like nothing better to do but bury to the ace. And I think that's going to make Ryan a favorite in this game now. Lots of pressure to not crack. Ooh, great improvement. And eight to seven along with. And... A recube, Benjamin's going to have to pass at 25%. Double sixes. Okay, never mind. What was I talking about? Around the bend. Still a lot of play in this for Ryan, though. Just needs to roll his prime forward in the board. Keep that midpoint. Give him problems getting off the 16. So I think this must just be 8-3. to three. I don't see better options here. And what can 6-3 do? All it can do is uh, clean up a blot and cover the ace. Can't clear the 16 safely yet. Double fours. Ooh, this is a little bit of a problem. Potentially. Oh, no, no. Pretty nice. Does it make... Uh, improves his board. I guess uh, down in the race we want to keep more contact. But is there more contact from the bar point? Not challenging his point six away. Or is there more on the 14 point here? Giving two points for the point on the 16 to hop over. This is a tricky one. This is my instinct was to come out here too. And all oh, they're all very close. And I think Ryan's just going to be in a tough spot where you have to spend a bunch of time bank on very difficult plays again that are actually all a wash. All have their own merit. Um, it's interesting how often just staying further back is actually the best contact play. Even though the bar doesn't directly challenge that 16 point. Well, if he tries to escape, you know, he's still going to have contact later is the nice thing about it. Okay, finds the best play again. This keeps the most pressure on the position, I noticed, too, since Benjamin's way more likely to have to give something up on this next roll than Ryan is on his next roll. He still has room to continue rolling his forward structure into the board. 6-4, not a great shot for him, though. I think he's stuck playing with those 11 checkers on the front and keeping both of his anchors and midpoint in place. It looks ugly, though. But what's better? I don't think we gain enough playing 13 to 3 or anything like this. Just volunteer a 4 that can lose the game. And we'll see if Benjamin is stuck giving something up. Yes, he has to clear his 9 or 8, most likely. One more chink in the armor. But uh, Ryan at risk of having to give up one of his points of contact as well now. Wonder what he does on a 5 2 or something like this if he gives up the 18 now. 5 1. Ooh, what's more important, the purity of our board? All our checkers are still alive if we come off the six. I'm not sure we can afford volunteering a, a direct shot that could be a game winner, but Benjamin does have a blot in his board. There's a little incentive and very few covers for it as well. So I think that ace means that uh, the point he's considering coming off is the 18. Otherwise, you would have a decision with the ace of maybe 13 to 12, yeah. And so... And look over the... Okay, if he looks at this, he just still wants the ace to the... Feels like we could reverse or reduce shots by playing 13 to 12 if we're going to do something like that. And clearing the 13 is actually a very close candidate because of how bad it is to break our board. Benjamin turning into a... A clear favorite in this game now after uh, a bit of a horror roll for Ryan. So when we cover the ace, though, we still have a four-point board and we have a five-point slotted. Nothing's dead yet. 
And so as far as crashing our board goes, it looks kind of okay. It's still, we still, I think, have a contact advantage there. And we just wait for Benjamin to come to us. Um, interesting. Okay, it finds the 18 to 13 variants. 3, 4 is just going to have to clear the 8. I think I get the idea. He wants to uh, find himself some flexibility to seize the least shots there, most likely. And this makes a strong point and puts some contact pressure back on Ryan. I think, okay, so he considers making the deuce and saving sixes or something like this so that he doesn't get pulled off of the 16. But having the strong board here just feels a little too potent. Four one. I think we got to stay back for the contact now and not let our opponent possibly get by on six five. But uh, six three and five four are big swings. He finds that one with ease. Six one. Okay. And what is this? How is Ryan doing after this? Okay, we duplicate three, so it can't be that many shots. Six two four four two two. Six four, not one of them. I think he's gonna let go of the blot. Is he? Or does he have to stay for contact? I guess he can still lose a gammon, so eighteen eight. Yep. Yeah. And very rare that Benjamin can't get past this, but his race has improved some with these large awkward rolls, so one set would get him right back in it. And six four is enough to uh close some of the gap. Still playable. Four in, and we're going to slot the deuce for distribution, it looks like. Okay. Two one brings two in. So if Ryan ends up uh, staying behind in this race, we'll get to four away, three away. Lots of it. Okay. Double fives is going to clean up a lot of it and make a new favorite, I think. Three two. With a 25% take point, Ryan can still actually, um, for Benjamin, he can still actually send a little bit earlier than money. I mean, we're nowhere near it yet. Just a small favorite. But um, hopefully he has that number to know that he needs to get recubes in at some point. And could be at two away, five away, if continues to take the advantage in this game. Otherwise, he'll be in a, a nice, aggressive four away, three away with still a ton of match equity and fun cubes to send. Uh uh, as far as trailing scores go, it's an enjoyable one. Wow, he gains nine pips and his opponent only gains three, so he's probably jumped into uh, cube territory now. And yeah, we have a clear double and a bear take. And we'll see if he has an idea of the match equities and race formulas and things like that well enough to find this one. But if you can get yourself around 25%, then, uh, then you must know that you're getting close to the borderline. Both of them just going to have to rely on their, their match play knowledge and racing formulas to get there. All calculation here. Lots of fun questions asked Ryan for how he's making these decisions here too because again I um I'm not sure he's like a by the numbers player. I think it's mostly feel stuff and so when he gets here he's just using his best pattern recognition he can to make the best guess he's got available. I I don't think he's mapping this out like most players would be doing here. But um, it is entirely possible that he's, you know, studied, improved his game since then and now has some formulas that he's working with. Has some sense there. But this is the big one to find. Really needs to send it. It's even passable by Benjamin, so. Maybe he just wants to get a tell out of Benjamin. Wait till he... Oh, just smacks the five points. So he is thinking about wastage and trying to 
understand exactly what that means for this uh for this racing distribution stressing about it too he's been telling these physicians i think he takes a lot of time with this just strictly because like he so important to him to make awesome decisions and play good pr he doesn't want to make a mistake here and uh, like whether or not he actually has access to something to get him to more accurate decision he's gonna feel the stress of it for sure Yeah, I know it's Benji that has the decision, but I could see Ryan passing, like, not sending a cube here. It's a leading score, and he does find it. Okay, good job by him. Benji should have made a decision already. He doesn't have the clock to bank to uh, do anything else and passes. Okay. And break even more or less, so fine decision by him, and Ryan gets the two-way, five-way now. 75% match equity. Big favorite to win the match again. I think I have an update over here. It might be a little stale now, but we had Sander up 14 to 11. Zdenyuk up a bunch of crossovers. Maybe you won. I, I don't know what this says. Zdenyuk won. Okay. So ZZ onto the quarters of the undefeated. Excellent tournament run for him. That's exciting stuff. Let's have the youngest finals ever. How about that? Yeah, after 5-1 split leading, I think we're just going to split ourselves. Looks at the two down play. Five three makes a point. Don't know what you guys are talking about with sandwiches, but that's cool. Yeah, okay. We can't improve our position by making the seven because it leaves a direct six. So what are our best shuffling aces here? He's going to play to the nine. Okay, seems reasonable. What is XG's preferred play? Two up from the back. That's very strange looking. Hard one to find. Ace, I guess it gives good sixes from the bar in some sense, but uh, also bids for a better anchor, challenges that blot when Ryan doesn't perform. So seems like a good place to be. And the four should be a hit and lift. That's very interesting. Only Ryan finds those. <laughs> and 5-3, it didn't hit. Great response from Ryan. It'll be tough for him to find a cube at this score unless they get to like a simple endgame race. 4-5, Benjamin hits back from the bar. As soon as there's any gammon threats, Ryan will be more incented to play on. Fans, though. And 5-way, 2-way... Aggressive cubes coming from Benjamin with uh, one in the air and two more back. There's going to be some gammons here. So in the event that he hits and gets away from it with it, he doesn't want to lose his market. And it feels a little bit early, but going to get it in and make sure that doesn't happen with three back and still Ryan having a better board. Easy take for him. Five, three, going to hit loose on the five and we'll see if he can turn it around here. Oh, look at that. And it's almost break even because of the three checkers back just to link up with the outfield. But, uh, this feels like the natural score play for sure. I'm thinking blitz all the way, all the way. Six two enters one somewhat poorly and blitz is still on for Benjamin. This is gonna cover with the ace and make the eight, why not? Yeah, no more loose hits. Would have loved to uh, put another checker in the air, no such luck. Ryan with a great chance to anchor here, he does it and makes the better anchor out of it too. 6-1 looks like it's just going to run. Blitz is over, and now it's a bummer to have sent the cube. Ryan can just camp on this, too, and maybe win the match. When he doesn't, he's still a favorite in the match. So this is the downside of sending early cubes at these scores. That two points is just worth a ton for Ryan. Closing the match, very important. 6-3 links up, and just a nice, solid racing lead for Benjamin now. So looking good in this, but Ryan's got good contact, too. 6-5, do we have the timing to keep the goalkeeper back on the 24? It's going to lose Gammons, too, so we have a bit of score incentive to just escape it. But um, making the three looks very nice for wins. Surprisingly enough, it doesn't win more. Okay, nice find for Ryan. Tricky play for me. Five's going to make a blocking point, two down, way ahead in the race again. But uh, the 10 and 8 together can be difficult points to clear along with the midpoint, so nice-looking contact for Ryan here. Just needs to build his board and get ready. 
Three one looks like it's gonna have to stack up the five point. Oh, oh wow! Look at this. Should play down and okay. Should just make the seven. Yeah, you get to make some bolder plays at the score like this when gammons are one way. Um, try to invite your. You know, you want to make nice developments and have an easier time clearing. It's going to be difficult with that contact later. And if your opponent uh, chooses to hit you early, that can turn into a more gammonish game in general, which only benefits you and not your opponent. So we see more of those at, at trailing scores for sure. This looks like we want to clear points and not make blocking points. So he misses a tactical opportunity to clean up 10 to 8 and stay out of direct range. The, the 9 is the right idea when you're down in the race. When you're ahead, you don't want this contact. Six five clears the points. Six three looks like it's gonna. Oh, interesting! I thought we would have tried to make the bar somehow, but okay. Throw those sixes back. Would have been somewhat awkward or roll for Benjamin. I mean, I'm sure he'd take it, but it uh, leaves a lot of difficult contact from the ten point. Five three. Well, he rolled six three and played to five three points. Yes. Yeah, I agree with all your assessments, CMC. How great Ryan's been playing in this and uh how exciting that is just for backgammon in general. It's uh in Marbella, I remember Mochi said about Ryan that it was he was interesting. <laughs> I think for very strong players, that's interesting how, how meaningful of a compliment that is, too. Um, interesting in the sense of how good he is, how early, and how how great that means he could be with time as well. You know, it's um, definitely the kind of player where it's entirely up to him whether he wants to be world champ or not. But uh, you don't seem too many where they just demonstrate the skills to maybe do it. But uh, Ryan's one of those sh for sure. He keeps it as his game. Hideaki is one of those too. 6-2 forced off and not too much gammon risk here, but a little bit scary. Double fives. <laughs> Ooh, that's a crusher. Okay, not a lot of hope for winning this game for Ryan, but he should be able to save the G. He just needs to uh, probably happier to enter with the six than to stay on the roof for contact to try to win. Uh, Benjamin evens out, so definitely wants to come in with a 5 or a 6 now. And fans, okay, they're going up a little bit. 5-4, 2 off. And 4-2, not the best entry, but that should save most gammons. Very unlikely. And most likely going to 2 away, 3 away. 3-1, three, rolling low, though. So three's coming out, and then where do we get the most advantage of crossovers? Probably continue to the 17, I suppose. 11 to 10 for some reason. I never know how to figure those out. Someone's got to teach me that someday. Seems like it duplicates fives in some weird way. 6-3, I assume from the back. Why would we waste uh, a six coming into the five? Six five two off, okay. Huge favorite to get off this. 2-1. Ouch. Going to make a little bit of a sweat of it. 3-1. Needs a miss and a set to win a gammon for Benjamin. 6-4. Just going to get off. Resign the single game. Still with the match lead. 3 away, 2 away. I believe it's a 60-40 game at 3 away, 2 away. Once again, one of the most aggressive sending of the cube scores for Benjamin. Uh, interesting effects on the take point where in races they'll both take a uh, pass around 25. So, kind of more conservative all around. The leader and the trailer are right around there. And Ryan taking a short break before we conclude at two way, three way. What an exciting one so far. Oh, Snelling's won his match and gets to play ZZ next, too. Okay. Six 
Exciting match over there that I missed, huh? Looks like Will's over on the stream interviewing with Phil about that match, so check that out on this break for sure. Hop over to the, the second stream. Yeah, I'm glad to see Ryan taking a lot of breaks in this, though. He's mentioned that one of the hardest things about live play for him is keeping his focus through a whole match, that it's just uh, very long and distracting, and he's used to being done, and it's hard to pay attention. That's a good solution to that. Just make sure you take a lot of breaks, refresh yourself, come back, and, and get uh, focused on your game again. Man, all the players in this uh, in this uh, semifinals, or round of four, we'll call it, are going to be a pretty special bracket there. Zizi and Wilcox is going to be an exciting one. I struggle to imagine how that's not the match tomorrow, but but either of these players and and whoever they're playing against from the other side, very strong too, could be Sander and someone. How are we going to pick that? We might have to space those out and find some way to get both. Folks saying Wilcox seems 100% focused. Yeah, I mean, his mental game is very good. He uh, talks a lot about fitness and breathing exercises, meditation, everything you have to do to keep yourself, like your best self at the board. I think these are all important things that we think about solving in like top level of comp competition. Maybe you think of it for athletes more often, but any other competitive like mind sport, they're doing all these things too. And um, I won't say it's essential. Of course, you can win a tournament without it. But, I mean, certainly optimal strategy includes coming to the, to the board with your, your, your head in the right space to make the best decisions you're capable of. So um, he's got that part solved for sure. Snellings will play a better PR than ZZ. I, I guess I would agree, but it's not so clear. Both are very strong. Very, very strong. Ooh, already rooting for Azizi versus Rebel final. How can you root against any of these guys? They're so, they're just all aces. Someone thinks Lund wins this easily? Well, 40% of the time, but, uh... <laughs> if they're equal and XG's right and all these kinds of things. Man, I, I, I feel like when we were looking through the round of 32 or something like that, that we had a lot of, you know, good players and kind of less known players and plenty of matchups, but like not as many clear standouts in the undefeated. We ended up streaming some things from the fighters bracket. Uh, a lot of really interesting 11 point matches on that second chance side. And then all of a sudden we just like the cream has risen on this side, and we've got nothing but just knockout matches here. Really exciting, clean stuff. How do we pick at this point? When I looked at these, I didn't know which of these matches we should be streaming on the main stream versus the second stream. So of course, we will do both in that sense. At the very least, we'll have a second stream with the other match, too. You can watch both at the same time. 2 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, ZZ is certainly capable of playing under 3 2. <laughs> this is extremely hype. I'm with you. What else do we have to talk about here? If you don't have the Galaxy app on mobile and you have Apple, go get that. Give us feedback. I'm sure, we'll have to make some or er, yeah, some iterations on that. But uh, really excited to finally be launching ahead after everyone was waiting for for Galaxy 2.0 for so long. It'll be in the Android, the Google Play Store soon after. I can't wait to get that on my phone too. Playing on the Monte Carlo Grand Prix board. Uh, many of the streams you've seen, we've had that Tempest clock as well. They're playing with a uh, regular ZMF here, but um, cool addition. It's uh, You can get a cell phone app on your app and plug it into this uh, base, the Tempest base, and it uses a gyroscope in the phone so that when you 
tap either side it knows which side's uh active and just a neat little innovative solution to uh, backgammon clock stuff like that a lot check all that out and uh i mean supporting galaxy in any way that you can is how we're able to make these streams and keep growing backgammon this way i feel like the production keeps getting better every year we got bill and tara out here uh making the video look nice for everyone and two streams available phil helping out on the b stream commentary we got a Vive on transcription mate in there sometimes too and i think they're about to start back up just looking for the transcriber yep there's a Vive in the in the background walking by for the conclusion of this super exciting match huge swings all over the place Uh, yes, I'm okay. I've got a chair. I prefer standing in general. Um, I'm actually not sure why they're not using it for this match. Some players do have a preference to work with something else. I think Tara is worried about how it shows up on the stream occasionally, but I don't know. Really like a pick em choice. I think one of her things, I mean, for streaming specifically, someone from the stream team physically has to use their cell phone and doesn't have access to that anymore so while it might be more convenient for a player it's a little weird to have to have someone on staff put it over there so look at that out i imagine you'll be seeing more of that though what is the difference between championship division and monte carlo open the monte carlo open was just like the warm-up tournament it was like uh um started the first couple days the championship division is of the world championship so um Different events, I think they're referring to. Championship division versus intermediate. Ooh, double five starts with a blitz for Ryan. Never going to have a cube at this score and a fan, but could play on for an undoubled gammon and a win of the match that way. Six five, though, and where. Ooh, finds the split immediately without even thinking about it. Running looks like a nice option for. Uh, for just the race too but finds that without even thinking about it fours is gonna oh it's not gonna hit loose wow making a board points better that's a surprise to me i would have thought i guess it's just so many blots around and you're still under a lot of pressure um okay fours are a little bit duplicated too yeah gonna go for the hit i don't fault this play at all they're super close feels like you want to play gammonish plays at the score too but will he look at possibly making the four point? Doesn't have a ton of time left on the clock. This might be the last one he can think through. If he spends enough time on it. I haven't seen him get down below two minutes. Had a lot more time and was playing a lot more concerned about it in a previous match. 5-3 I think is just going to escape one checker to safety. Where else are we going to go but to the 10 after that? Um, looking for duplication principles of slotting 8-5 to five, I guess. But what else is there? Just looks a little unnecessary. Oh, when it plays... Okay. When it plays down, it leaves a direct six. I see. I didn't even think about that. So we have to pick which shot we want to leave here or just play behind for the race. Looks over six to three to focus on the race, but realizes he has some advantage here. And um, six is somewhat duplicated. Six, four makes the bar. Six, one makes the, makes the five point. This should get the most returns. Yeah, I think this is the slotting play I'd find. Benjamin going to find a cube here, and I don't even know if he's a favorite. And wow, really close there. And I think there's a large gammon canceling effect in this one, which usually isn't so decisive, but a lot of Ryan's wins, even though he's like small underdog, are gammons, and it's nice to have those going one way with the turned cube. Now this five is better for distribution down the A. It's going to stay out of harm's way. Not split high, but uh, and the race is close, but small advantage in the race for Benjamin. Much larger now, and Ryan in a desperate need of a deuce for, for an anchor or a 5-3. Fans only nine in the zone, so he's got some time to make it still. We can get a loose hit, and Benjamin is not going to have as much time as he wants to think about this, possibly. Goes for the loose hit and down, makes the gammonish play, makes a lot of sense. Really needs a two, Ryan does. Five in is going to do something, though. Makes a bid for an advanced anchor here. And now Benjamin on the hook to hit and cover. Tough to do both. Uh, this can do either. He's got to choose between them. And I think typically the five-point board's worth a little more, which is going to create quite a volatile situation here. A five is going to save all the gammons. And missing is going to put his uh, 
match on the line here for a gammon. A lot of gammons in this position now. Ace hits, six down for covers. Or six around, sorry, we can do to the ten. Oh, this is more covers. Interesting. Both both seem make a lot of sense. Five for life. No luck. Benjamin most likely to cover here. Four, three doesn't, though. Can it afford to lift? To buy some time. Once again, wishes he had more time to think about it. And he's going to leave it slotted, stay pure. Small mistake here. And fives are such a huge gain and can still win a game without it. Uh, leaves it for him. Ryan can't hit it. 5-2-1 covers now. Now a big favorite to win a gammon for the match, Benjamin is. Whoever said he was going to win easy in the chat, well done. It's backgammon though, so there's still game to go. Let's see what happens. What a great match by both of them too. Three in continues to the four, I think. Interesting, 10 to six and seven. Oh yeah, we like that distribution too. Uh, 2 1, just going to advance to the 7, I do believe. 4 to 3. I'm not finding that one either. Small little technicalities. Uh, so yeah, 6 in because we can't leave a shot. And then can we take the 4 off? Um, another one of these situations where just playing for safety is going to win the most gammons. As long as we don't leave a shot, we're fine. I don't think we're cleaning here. 5 to 3, 1 off. But we could consider lifting the 6. With the spare, I think we break the six here. But okay, he finds the best play. I'm surprised by that one. Four, three can clear. Take two off. Clearing a little stronger. And Ryan's got a little bit of shot big here. Six, one, five, one stuff. Now big numbers could leave a shot for sure. Offer turnarounds to save the gamut at least. He would still love to get maybe one checker in. Maybe not. Maybe not. 4-3, oh, flattens out. Looking perfect for Benjamin. Going to need Benjamin to roll an ace to even have an opportunity at a shot, more or less. Four two, okay. Needs a fan and then a set. Gets his fan. 4-2, clears. Okay, one more chance at a fan. No ace. Comes in. That's going to do it for Benjamin, most likely. Great match for Benjamin Love, uh, Lund. Tough loss for Ryan. And there's your other four semifinalists. I'm not sure if the Sander match is decided yet. And look at those PRs. Really well played match. Lights out stuff. Thank you very much. Ryan's frustrated. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for the uh, water. I appreciate it. Come talk to us, kid. How much was it? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's fine. You want to come hang out, Ryan? Uh, I will buy you a drink. He's talking to Mochi right now. A little bit bummed out. Maybe we won't get him. <laughs> Frustrating loss for him, for sure. Lots of interesting decisions in that match. Congratulations to Benjamin advancing. This means he goes to the second chance side, though. A lot of 11-pointers to win over there. But tournament life's definitely not over. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. How many people we got watching now? It's getting exciting fast, you guys. 500 plus, okay. Hopefully by the weekend it's going even crazier. But yeah, everyone impressed. I wish we could get him over here to uh, tell him about all the the compliments he's getting there. Yeah, David Wells we had on here helping out for a while. Really great commentary from him. Um, thanks, everyone. Does he enter the round of 16 or 32? I'm not sure. But maybe if you go look at the bracket links in Draw Boss, those are listed on this video. You could tell there. Um... Yeah. Man, it's been exciting watching him all tournament uh, win the Open, of course, and, and running so well in this uh, in the World Championship as well. And really, I, I think this is maybe the most lights out stream performance we've seen yet. Really cool stuff. Super excited for him. It's funny. Whenever he wins, he wants to come over and just see the PR and make sure that's okay. Uh, feeling the pain of a defeat a little bit here, but he's going to be excited how he played that one at least. Probably just frustrated that he doesn't get a win. No justice. No justice. But really well played from Benjamin in general too. Found a lot of uh, tough checker plays. Made some, you know, a little bit deep takes, but uh, got full value out of them as well. So he made them work for him. Sometimes little style changes like that can work. 
Uh, is Mochi out? I'm not sure. He was in the fighters bracket playing people. I think he had Karsten. So him or Karsten is out now. Um, I'll do a little tour and get some updates on the score sheet, see what other matches are playing. They're mostly over. Um, cool. Getting an over interview with Benjamin Lund over there. Exciting stuff. Oh, Karsten won, so Mochi would be out then. Okay. What about Sander? I I don't know yet. Let me look over there. Uh, looks like people are talking. And like they're not playing, so it's probably done. I'm not sure when that makes its way into Draw Boss, but I can go get a shot of the bracket sheets here before I go to bed. Ryan probably left something in the playroom to go get it. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe he'll come over here. I'm going to wait it out a little bit. I can go over there and look and come back. I don't know. That feels weird to do at the end of the stream. I'm talking forever. Nothing. Rory's going to bother Ryan. We'll see what's going on. I'm so pumped for matches tomorrow. This has been exciting. This has been a really fun week. I don't think I've ever had like seven days straight or more of commentary. The first few were some 12-hour... Some some long runs. We're getting uh, pretty efficient now with just the match at 2 and match at 10. A lot easier on my schedule. More beach time, more gym time. I feel good today. I feel like I don't even need to get out of here. What time is it? Oh, Jesus. It's 1. All right. Should probably go soon. Oh, I bet he's in there looking over the match. That's exactly what he's doing. Oh, maybe I can get in there and get a Facebook Live interview with him. We'll see about this. But all right, I think I'm going to check out on the stream here. Uh, pleasure hanging out with you. Yeah, I'm disappointed for Ryan, excited for Benjamin too. Hard to see him lose, man. I don't know. It's hard not to root for the, the young guys for me. I'm allowed to be biased as a commentator, right? Not that I want to see Benjamin lose or anything like that, but what an exciting story it is to see. Like we were saying, I mean, I don't know. One of the most interesting players in backgammon right now and can't wait to see where he goes in the next few years. Still a contender to win and be a world champion this year, for all we know. Um, but super cool player to watch and appreciate him out here at these tournaments. Signing off. We'll see you tomorrow at 2. Check in on those brackets. Watch out on the... Make sure you're uh, subscribed to the Backgammon World Championship Facebook event, too. Um, if you have that, you'll see when we go live on those uh, like Facebook Live videos. And otherwise, I might post something to my Facebook page, but watch for one more update tonight from something like that. And otherwise, checking out of here, and we'll talk tomorrow. Later, everybody.